Hey Froggy friends, KiroStyle here. Welcome back to Ace Attorney Investigations. Thank you so much for joining me here on stream. Welcome in, Kieran. Thank you so much for being first. Timbit, welcome to the stream. Ash, it's good to see you. Psycho Reaper, welcome, welcome. Angora, welcome to the stream. Trey, thank you so much for stopping by. And thank you so much for 11 months sub. I really, really appreciate all your support. Thank you, thank you. And Aru, thank you so much for the 30 month sub. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for all your support. I really appreciate it. So today we are playing episode 4, Turnabout Reminiscence, of this game. Now, originally I was planning on spending two streams playing Turnabout Reminiscence, but it turns out I might be able to finish it in one stream, but we'll see. So I, I played this game before, so I'm not afraid to look up other people's videos to get an idea of how long each episode takes. And there's one person on YouTube that has a no commentary all dialogue series of the original version of this game. And so far my times have been pretty consistent with theirs in terms of all the streams thus far. Even though I'm pretty sure I'm not doing every single piece of dialogue in the game, but I am pressing every statement that I can, and I'm trying to remember to examine everything I can as well. So according to them, Turnabout Reminiscence is 7 hours long, so I'm gonna... I was gonna plan to break up into two streams. However, there's another person that has a no commentary playthrough of this game on YouTube that only does the dialogue options that are needed to complete the episode. And their playthrough of Turnabout Reminiscence is four hours. That's a pretty big discrepancy, three hour difference. I've been comparing times between both channels for episodes one, two, and three, and each of those ones seems to be the discrepancy is only 30 to 60 minutes. So, but then all of a sudden, this one, it jumps to a three-hour discrepancy, and then for the next one, there's also a bigger hour discrepancy, because the episodes get longer. So, I already know what the midpoint of this case is going to be. So, in my head, when we get to the midpoint, I'll look at the time, and I'll kind of decide if we will finish this all in one stream or not. Because I'm not going <laughs> to I'm not gonna stay up late just to finish it all in one stream. I'm sure I could, but I have work in the morning, so <laughs> we will see. So, as we saw from the last three episodes, the story is coming together. There's little plot points from each episode that are starting to be strung together. So, this one is a flashback case. At the end of the last episode, Kay revealed that she had met Edgeworth and Gumshoe before. And then she showed him an item that jogs his memory. So, this is going to be the flashback episode. And thank you so much for the hype train, guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you, thank you. Oh! Thank you for the frogs. Okay, let's get going with uh, Turnabout Reminiscence. Episode 4, Turnabout Reminiscence. Kay Faraday, the young lady who calls herself the second Yadagarasu. The piece of cloth that she conjured up is taking me back to many years ago. Seven years earlier. Yeah, that's right, I did it. I killed the guy. But it was the great thief Yadagarasu that told me to do it! I asked the defendants, just what exactly are you trying to say? Don't you get it? I know the true identity of the Yadagarasu! The Yadagarasu is the man standing over there at the prosecutor's bench. Are you saying that I'm the Yadagarasu? Don't you dare deny it! You told me to kill him when you snuck into the embassy! Are you claiming that Mr. Faraday is the Yadagarasu? That's exactly what I'm- Mr. Rell, I think we ju heard just about enough out of you. Your Honor, please listen to me, I'm telling the truth! You gotta be- you gotta believe me!
Hmm. In accordance with the defendant's accusation, a new prosecutor shall be called to replace Mr. Faraday. This court will be in recess until the new prosecutor is ready. September 10th. 3.20 p.m. District Court, 3rd Floor Lobby. So, as you can see, Edgeworth is wearing his young outfit, the one that you see in Turnabout Beginnings, in Trials and Tribulations. So, previous to this game, Turnabout Beginnings was the oldest case chronologically in the main Ace Attorney series. Now, this case is now the... the earliest case chronologically as of the release of this game. Interesting to note, there's a kid right behind Edgeworth here, and you can see he's excitedly looking at the display case, and he's wearing a blue badger shirt. <laughs> blue badger didn't exist <laughs> at this time period, so that's an anachronism, because blue badger wasn't created until Rise from the Ashes. But it's probably just a little Easter egg, but I just thought I would note that. It's almost time for me to enter the courtroom. And so it is that my first assignment as a prosecutor will be... ...as a replacement for a prosecutor who has been accused by the defendant. Edgeworth! Oh. Sir. Have you read over all the documents regarding this trial? Yes, sir. I've memorized everything there is to know. Very good. The paperwork for the prosecutor's substitution is just about complete. Edgeworth, always bear in mind that as your mentor, I, Manfred von Karma, will accept nothing short of perfection. I understand, sir. To have the chance to stand in court at such an early stage in my career, I'm honored and proud. As I've watched over your studies, I'm giving you this very rare chance. Prove yourself! Crush the defendant's pathetic lies into oblivion! Yes, sir! As such a legendary prosecutor will be watching and judging my performance. I have to be perfect in every way. Oh, I'm playing. <laughs> Thanks for calling Kirby. What's this kid have to say? <laughs> Look at all the judge portraits at the top. Aren't these great? Daddy made all of these. Awesome! But didn't you get fired right after you made them? Uh, yeah, I did. I spent the same amount of money on this model as it cost to build the real thing. My boss wasn't very happy with me. Haha. <laughs> hey, Daddy. Didn't you say you built a secret mechanism inside of it? Huh. <laughs> I'll tell you about it someday when you're older. Secret mechanism? Maybe he installed it as payback for getting fired. It could be trouble. Now I'm curious. Mr. Prosecutor, sir! You've got a good eye if you can tell that I'm a prosecutor with just one glance. As there are always only prosecutors and defense attorneys in this lobby. I usually hit the mark if I guess one or the other while there's a recess. You were only guessing. What, do you think this kid is a prosecutor and attorney? What about this old lady? Ah. Uh, excuse me, ma'am, but is something the matter? I just thought someone would have brought hors d'oeuvres by now. But this is a courthouse! It will be quite atypical to provide hors d'oeuvres here. Are you sure? Someone poured me a fresh cup of coffee last time I was here. What the heck does she think a courthouse is for? This is so good! Uh, uh, I could drink a whole gallon! I've never heard of water that tastes that good. Maybe I'll give him a minute. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh, uh. Does he plan on gulping the entire reservoir dry? 
this guy sounds like a character from Parks and Recreation. Hey, Gad, what a cold stare he's giving me. However, as a disciple of Von Karma, there's no option but to win. He's good. The power of his cold stare rivals my own. Oh, he's sleeping while standing up. Hey, Leon, welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping by today. It's good to see you. The trial will resume shortly. Please wait a moment, sir. Hmm. I was already well aware of that. Shortly or in a moment. Which one is it? Be specific. A bookshelf, huh? Compendium of Laws for Beginners. I don't have the time to read this and second-guess myself now. Wait. Is that the thinker? Look, it's the thinker in the corner. Which, of course, is relevant to the very first case of the first Ace Attorney game. This should lead to the defendant lobbies. Edgeworth, where is your composure? If you wish to take a look at your enemy, do so in the courtroom as you crush him. Indeed, thank you. You are a man of wisdom and experience, sir. Bulletin board. There are trial schedules posted on it. Trial schedule for this week. Huh? There's only today's trial listed. This must be a mistake, or this country's judicial system is not working as it should. A model of the courthouse. It's pretty well constructed. Hmm? Hands and a face? Don't tell me this thing transforms! Yet, I wonder for what other purpose could they have been made? What? A transforming courthouse? Hey, what's up, Manfred? I like how sometimes to talk to people, I have to like walk right up into their face, and it looks so silly on the sprite. Today's trial should have ended in just one minute. Because the defendant was picked up by the security camera, correct? Exactly. The killer had the gall to say he only killed because he was instructed to do so. Even more outrageous is his claim the case prosecutor, Byrne Faraday, gave the order. Ha! Huh. Faraday is such a fool. He's been courted by his very own prey. Sir, are you an acquaintance of Mr. Byrne Faraday? Huh. He's a pathetic man who speaks nothing but nonsense. Nonsense? You once tried to explain to me a way of punishing those who cannot be brought to court. Those who cannot be brought to court? That is nonsense, for no man is above the law. Well, there are always a few exceptions. However, there is no reason to even deal with such individuals. A prosecutor is a guardian of the court, one with no obligation to outside matters. Thus, there is no reason to deal with such individuals, I see. Edgeworth, disgracing yourself as Faraday has will not be forgiven. Have no fear, I will not let you down, sir. In place of the accused prosecutor, Byrne Faraday, I'll prove the defendant's guilt. Very good. I've secured an hour of recess for you to prepare to do just that. Show them all the power of Von Karma. I like how young Edgeworth, some of his animations, are similar to Von Karma's animations, like the finger wag, to show that he's like taking after his mentor before he decides to, well, break away from that. Fate, welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping by today. So, have you achieved a firm understanding of the case? Yes, sir. I've memorized everything that is written down in the case files. Well, then explain the case to me. I want to see if you really know what you're talking about. Understood. A murder was committed on September 8th in front of the Kodopian Embassy. The victim, Mr. Dead Man, <laughs> was a staff member at the Embassy. If there was ever a, an on-the-nose Ace Attorney pun name, it's this guy. The defendant in this case, Mr. Mackrell. <laughs> was held for questioning the night of the incident as he was deemed suspicious. He was quickly placed under arrest for possession of the murder weapon, a gun. Furthermore, at the time of the murder, 
the great thief Yadagarasu had successfully infiltrated the Kodopian embassy as well. At first, Rel claimed he himself was the Yadagarasu, but that he did not kill Dead Man. I wonder what he expected to gain from such a desperate lie. It's possible he wants to go down while in the spotlight if he's found guilty. There truly is no limit to people's inanity. But I digress. Continue, Edgeworth. Yes, sir. During the trial, the prosecution presented the security footage that captured the murder. The footage clearly showed Mr. Rell as the murderer. The act of Mr. Rell firing the gun could be clearly seen from the visitor's gallery. Upon seeing that, the defendant retracted his statement and admitted to the murder. I did it because I was told to. By the real Yadagarasu, Burn Faraday. Hmm, that sounds about right. However, you've forgotten one thing. Hmm? While this may appear to be simply the murder of a Kodopian Embassy staff member, People are actually referring it to the as the second KG-8 incident. The second KG-8 incident. I'm very sorry, sir. I fear I failed to study hard enough. Hmm. Well, even among the police, it's information that only a select few are privy to. Could you please enlighten me, sir? Sir, what do you mean by the second KG-8 incident? In order for me to tell you that, you must first learn about the original case. Take a look at these documents. This is a three-year-old newspaper. You have heard of the Amino Group scandal before, correct? Yes, I have. The secretary of Ernest Amino, the Amino Group's director, was arrested. Under suspicion of smuggling. Correct. CCU was an employee of the Amino Group. And the sole witness to the smuggling operation, it was she who brought the crime to light. However, Miss Yu was silenced before she could testify in court. Wasn't a Kadopian Embassy staff member arrested for the murder? Yes. A Kadopian by the name of Manny Cochin was the suspect. However, due to lack of evidence, the case went unsolved. Lack of evidence? Ha! If only I was in charge of the case. I would have done everything in my power to prove his guilt. To make sure that all criminals are found guilty, my mentor really is dedicated. Faraday was the prosecutor on the case then, and he was as pathetic as ever. Mr. Faraday was in charge of the KG-8 incident as well. That's right. And now, once again, the victim of the case you are currently assigned to was someone who was scheduled to testify against that smuggling organization. Just like last time, the victim was murdered right before he was to testify. You're catching on. The victim was murdered just before his day in court against the smuggling organization. Events are occurring almost exactly the same way as they did in the KG-8 incident. So that's why it's being called the second KG-8 incident. Yes. Yet there is one difference between the two incidents. What would that be? The so-called noble thief that's sending everyone into an uproar. The Great Thief, Yadagarasu. Yadagarasu? I better find out more. Is it true that Yadagarasu showed up at the Kodopian Embassy? What could he or she have been after? Hmm. No doubt to steal any suspicious accounting records and release them publicly. Or more likely to steal secrets from the Kodopian Embassy itself since the item that the Yadagarasu stole from there was sent to the police. What was it that the Yadagarasu sent to the police? I don't know the details. 
anything related to the Yadagorasu is getting the top secret treatment. Still, I find it very ironic. By returning the stolen item to the police, it was proved positive that the Yadagorasu had infiltrated the embassy on the same day the staff member was killed. Criminals have a way of incriminating themselves, wouldn't you say? That would have to be the first time the Yadagorasu has left evidence behind, correct? Yes, indeed. If you wish to learn more about the Yadagorasu, then I suggest you ask Faraday. Mr. Faraday? He happens to be the prosecutor in charge of the Yadagorasu case as well. He's the prosecutor in charge of both the KG-8 incident and the Yadagorasu case. Mr. Faraday really has a lot on his plate. What is it, little girl? You're scary, mister. Ugh. Did you need something? Um, I want to trade these coins with you. Fistful of dimes, quarters, and pennies. It looks like you have exactly a dollar. Is this what you want? Thanks, that's exactly what I needed. Could that child be here to watch the trial? How disrespectful for a child like that to be running around inside the courthouse. Does no one have respect for this country's judicial system anymore? The paperwork for the prosecutor's substitution is complete. Why, you? Do you even know how much time there is left before the trial resumes? Uh, I'm so sorry. I could have you mopping up the courthouse instead of protecting it in an instant. Uh, uh. It's no bother, sir. Not being completely prepared could prove to be a perfect handicap for me. Hm, a proud one, you are. <laughs> Look at them both doing their finger wags. You better collect the evidence from Faraday and prepare yourself. It's time for your debut, Edgeworth. <gasps> Edgeworth is debuting! <laughs> September 10th, 4 o'clock p.m. District Court. Courthouse, courtroom number 3. Just what is going on? Why isn't Faraday here yet? How is it possible the defense is not prepared yet either? Bailiff, where is Mr. Faraday? Uh, I'm not sure. I wasn't really paying attention. Hey look, we can see the judge's feet for the first time. <laughs> oh, you must be the one Mr. Von Karma recommended. I hear this will be your first trial. I look forward to seeing how you perform. Oh, by the way, was there someone celebrating a birthday during the recess? I could have sworn I heard a popper going off. Come to think of it, the other day with my grandson. Sir, I feel like you should be a bit more concerned about hearing a popper going off at the courthouse. <laughs> Sir, it looks like the trial is about to resume, however. Yes, it will be all but impossible to prove the witness a liar. Without the evidence from Faraday! What is that blasted buffoon up to? It's an emergency, sirs! Oh. Uh, silence! There shall be no yelling in this sacred hall of law. Bailiff, remove the man from this courtroom at once. Uh, please! Wait! You have to listen to me! There's an emergency! Defendant Lobby Number 2! Mr. Faraday! And the defendant! The two of them... They're... They're both dead, Your Honor! What? What? 
What? What? <laughs> Young judges for justice. Nine dollars for beef jerky. Nine dollars for orange juice. Do you see that? September 10th, District Court Hallway. Stay back. Ugh. No one's allowed on the crime scene. Period. Just who does this oddball think he is? This is becoming quite the hot spot. Isn't she Mr. Brell's defense attorney? Hey you! No running in the hallway, pal! And who are you to tell me what to do? I'll never find out what's going on like this. It's time for some civil discourse. First, I need to get a handle on the situation. Perhaps I should talk to some people. Fire extinguisher. If one were to be hit in the head with this, I suppose the victim would lose a memory or two. But it's not as though I'd ever be so foolish as to be struck by one of these. Of course, that's a reference to the first case of Justice for All. A poster of the judge. There's a longer slogan of some sort on it in tiny letters at the bottom. Every strike of my gavel brings the truth closer to me, and my hair further away. Is this a promotional poster for the court, or a hair growth product? Hey, Menma! Welcome to the stream! Thank you so much for coming by! Welcome in, Raiders! Hope you guys are doing well. Thank you, thank you for stopping by the stream! Please join us in following Menma when you get a chance. Let's write a shout-out. It's a really cool streamer, Catboy, plays Final Fantasy XIV, among other games. Very friendly community, you should go check him out. Hope you guys all had a great time with Mamma today. What were you playing? Did you have a good time? I'm Kiro, the frog theme martial artist. We're playing some Ace Attorney Investigations. We're on episode 4, and we just started, so welcome in. Feel free to sit back and relax, or go take care of yourself after your stream. I really appreciate you being here. Defendant lobby number one is through here. The incident took place in lobby number two next door. I shouldn't allow myself to be sidetracked like this. I better get a move on. Hmm. A drink vending machine. Ugh! Now is not the time to be pondering what kind of drink I want. Interesting. They're selling special court-themed food products here. Many of them seem sort of troublesome and suspicious. Objection, I suppose. Oh, you're doing Final Fantasy XIV Savage Runs. That sounds fun. Hope you had a good time. Hope you made some good progress. And you are... Who, me? Hey, pal! It's common courtesy to tell someone your name first, before asking theirs. Ugh, point taken. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I'm a district prosecutor. A prosecutor? I've never seen a prosecutor as young as you, pal. I've told you my name, now would you mind telling me yours? Detective Dick Gumshoe, and I've just recently achieved my dream of becoming a detective. More than a dream, it's what I was born to do. Wait, maybe I should check and make sure I'm not really in some crazy dream first. Detective is entirely too excited to be at a murder scene. So, Detective Gumshoe, would you mind telling me what you know about the incident? You know, I don't have to tell you anything, right? I know that. But it would behoove you to fill me in on what you know. Wow, you're a proud one for such a youngster, aren't you? Well, anyway, Detective Bad is the one in charge. So you're just gonna have to ask him for all the details, okay? As for me, I was guarding the door to defendant lobby number two. Hmm. So you were on guard detail. Did you notice anything strange while you were on the duty? Well, I freaked out when I heard a gunshot, and then I kind of froze. 
you're a detective and a measly gunshot scared you that much? Then again, I can hardly claim not to know what it's like to hear one at close range. Then Detective Bad came running to the scene! We went to Detective Lobby number two together, and both men were lying there dead! Is that everything? Hmm. Yeah, that's it! I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single peep of a struggle! Interesting. Other than the gunshot, he didn't hear a single sound of commotion. Wait, what if I... Take this! You mentioned that you've only recently become a detective, did you not? You got it! I'm a brand spanking new detective! Hmm, so that means you've probably never seen a real prosecutor's badge, right? If you so desire to see one, I just might be able to make your day. <laughs> Edgeworth, you're so smug. You don't have to go through the trouble, pal, because a real man has a police badge. And someday I'm gonna become an ace detective, just like Detective Bad. Uh, did I say something wrong, pal? Forget it, detective. Gumshoe says something similar to Phoenix when you show him his attorney's badge for the first time. This sofa looks like it's seen its fair share of use. And it looks like another part of the courthouse is visible from the window. Ah! My eyes have locked with my reflection's eyes in the barred window! As a student of Von Karma, I refuse to back down! I won. Edgeworth, you're such a... You're such a nerd. Excuse me, but... Who are you? Detective Tyrell Bad. Homicide. I was informed of the situation and came as quickly as possible. So how did you arrive and inspect the body before me? Faraday requested me to testify in the trial. Plain and simple. I think... Detective Bad is probably one of, if not the coolest character in the entire Ace Attorney franchise just by, like, appearance and musical theme and everything. Like, he's, like, I'm just not even talking about, like... I'm not talking about cool as in, like, he... A type of character I would normally gravitate to, but he's just objectively really cool. <laughs> Mr. Faraday requests you be here. Like, look at this guy! I've already contacted HQ about the situation. I've got nothing to say to you, kid. Kid! I'm Mr. Faraday's substitute in today's trial. Therefore, I insist you update me on the situation. Can't back down here. I have a right to know. Do I need to teach you a thing or two about how to talk to adults, kid? Is he threatening me? <laughs> Is he going for his gun? A mirror. How dare he trick me like that? Faraday was stabbed to death with some kind of blade, and he had a gun in his hand. The other man, uh, Mr. Macwell, was shot and killed. He was found holding a bloody knife in his hand. Was there anyone else who went into defendant lobby number two? Yeah, that big lug over there. His name's Gumshoe. He was in charge of guarding the place. He's claiming that no one else entered the room. If that's the case, then they must have killed each other, correct? Maybe. Such impudence! This guy is really testing my patience. Why was I not informed that you were going to testify in court? Homicides aren't my only gig. The Adagarasu case is also one of my assignments. Hmm. So you were called upon to comment on the Yadagarasu's characteristics. In order to assess if Mr. Faraday really was the Yadagarasu or not. Well, well. It looks like you just might have a brain after all that head of yours. Son. Son! I'm not your son! Pops.
Do you have a minute? You know, I'm not really into talking to people I don't know. Especially at a time like this. Ah, I apologize for not introducing myself before bothering you. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I was to take Mr. Faraday's place in court. Edgeworth, huh? Never heard of you. So Faraday's substitute is a newbie, huh? How have you know, madam, that I studied under Manfred von Karma? Do not take me for some naive novice. <laughs> Thanks for the frogs, Luke. Welcome in. <laughs> Do not take me for some naive novice. <laughs> You're a student on karma. <laughs> I should have. <laughs> Those clothes are a dead giveaway. <laughs> S Stop right there! These are the great garments of one who countly presents the facts. <sighs> Thanks for the great laugh, but try not to make me laugh so much, okay? I wasn't trying to do anything of the sort. <laughs> just kidding. I was just goofing around. By the way, do you know who I am? My name is Callisto Yu. And if you're telling the truth, then we're about to go head to head in court. I saw a post a long time ago about Callisto Yu. I think it was going around the Tumblr at the time, and it was like Callisto Yu is the most relatable character in all of Ace Attorney because. She, she took one glance at Miles Edgeworth and just burst out laughing and couldn't control herself, and that is so relatable. <laughs> hey Tsuki, welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping by. Ah, but of course. I've heard much about you, Miss Yu. <laughs> ah, but of course. I've heard much about you. <laughs> You're a regular Shakespeare. Did I say something funny? I'd like you to update me on the situation. I don't really know anything. Why don't you try talking to those detectives over there? If that's the case, then why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's so funny? It's just the way you speak is so tactless. The person I was going against in court until only a little while ago was just murdered. It's not like he'd go back into the courtroom pretending as though nothing happened. That's a good point. I apologize for asking such an insensitive question. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's you! There is someone here who wishes to see you. Who is it? A Kadopian Embassy staff member by the name of Manny Cochin. What? What's going on? Detective Bad and Miss Yu's moods just changed all of a sudden. Wait a second. Wasn't Manny Cochin... I'll be right there. It's nice to see you again, Miss Yu. Why are you here? I have no desire to see you again. Now, now. Actually, would you mind stepping outside for a brief chat? Fine, let's go. Bad. Von Karma, it's been a long time. I knew you would show up. You usually do so when the Yadagross is involved, and I see this case as no exception. Do you know Detective Bad, sir? Yes, he's like an old bloodhound that never leaves the scene of a crime. If only he would get a promotion and move on. It's the crime scene where a detective is most useful and effective. Hm. It's not like I don't know that. Moving on though, bad, that man I just passed by. Was he not the suspect from the KG-8 incident? So I was right. 
Just what is the man doing wandering around here? That Faraday, I can't believe he let such an easy catch get away. Imbecile! I would have proved his guilt in three minutes! Von Karma, I think you've said enough for now. It's in poor taste to speak like that about the departed. Very well. Back on topic, I'm placing Edgeworth in charge of the investigation here. Objection! Papa, how can you place him in charge? Francisca, what are you doing here? I'm here for summer vacation, what else? Francisca von Karma, so she is here on summer vacation from Germany. She's the daughter of Manfred von Karma, and a student of his who's also junior to me. You're the one who's junior to me, and don't you forget it! You're not conveniently avoiding the bar examination, are you? Huh. If you were able to pass, then I'll av have absolutely no trouble at all. I'll never allow myself to lose to you. Never! Why does she always have to be this competitive? Anyway, Papa, are you really assigning Miles and Edgeworth to cover the case? Yes, I am. Why do you ask? Well, you know... I'm close to becoming a prosecutor myself. And I'm 100% confident I can do a better job than him. That's just like Francisca. She has no problem bad-mouthing someone right in front of them. Bad. Yeah. These two will be conducting the investigation. What? You want me to let both of these kids loose on the crime scene? Ah, this is a perfect opportunity for them to work on their prosecutorial skills. The crime scene is not a place for children to be messing around in. I'm the one with authority over this crime scene, bad. And I will not tolerate complaining. Ugh. Edgeworth! Francisca! I leave this case to the two of you. Understood, sir. Yes, Papa. I'll go take care of the paperwork now. Remember, I'll accept nothing but a perfect report from the both of you. Do not disappoint me. Hold up, Von Karma, I still haven't agreed to this! Miles Edgeworth. It's been quite some time, Francisca. This will be the perfect chance for us. See which of us is truly worthy of the Von Karma name. Would it kill you to at least say hello? Ugh. L Dog time no see. Very good. Just because you became a prosecutor first doesn't mean you can act all proud. Ugh. She hasn't changed a bit. Miles Edgeworth. As I was saying, we shall see which one of us is worthy of the Van Karma name. Crying out loud, I've been reduced to a babysitter. Looks like Mr. Von Karma was successful in convincing the detective. That's just like him. He never fails. Now I'd appreciate if you can quickly run me through the facts, Detective Bat. You better off checking off things out on your own. Very well. Seems like getting help from Detective Bad will be a most arduous task. September 10th, 4.15 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby, number 2. Ugh. Is the only real explanation that they killed each other simultaneously? Miles Edgeworth, you should listen to someone until they are finished talking. Uh, what are you talking about? I'll only say it one more time. This is a competition to see who is truly worthy of the Von Karma name. Competition. The person that figures out the truth first wins. Huh. So the person who doesn't discover the truth is a dishonor to the name. Exactly. I don't care you became a prosecutor before me. 
I simply refuse to hear any more foolish things coming from your foolishly foolish mouth. Fine, whatever makes you happy. Can I take that as you accepting my challenge? Once again, whatever makes you happy. Huh, well then, let's begin the investigation, shall we? I'm going to find the perfect evidence and prettily present it like the professional I am. Competing to discover the truth behind a crime. How delightfully childish. You kids over here, hold it! Kid! Ha! Huh, serves you right, Miles. He just called you a kid. I said kids, kid. How dare you call me a kid as well? I'll do what I please, and I won't allow you to cause a ruckus on my crime scene. Hey, big guy. You're going to watch over these two. Yes, sir! Detective Bad, sir! Now, do what I say from now on, kids, okay? You better not get in our way, Scruffy. You'll feel the bite of my whip if you do. <laughs> the you, prosecutor boy! Let's get your investigation started already, alright? Great. Now even that detective is treating me like a child. Alright, it's time to get investigating! Let's get a move on, prosecutor boy! My name is Miles Edgeworth. And if you were to call me prosecutor boy one more time, it would be my duty as a prosecutor to look into your monthly salary. What? And what would you do with my salary after you saw how much it was? And that's up to you now, isn't it? Really? Sounds good, pal. He's so naive. I love seeing all these interactions between young Edgeworth, young Francisca, young Gumshoe, and also Von Karma, just because they have a really weird family dynamic, and we've only ever really heard about it up till now, so to actually see it... Detective Bad, may I have a word with you? What is it? It appears that both knife and a gun were used as murder weapons. Yeah, it does. That leads us to our first question of the investigation. Where did the men acquire the weapons? The gun was inside of Faraday's bag. It was a piece of evidence that was presented in the trial earlier today. It was used to kill the Kadopian Embassy staff member. But I never heard anything about the knife. Mr. Rell was being held by the police. There's no way he could have brought it in. Which means it's possible that Faraday had the knife on him from the start as well. Could it have been a piece of evidence that had yet to be presented? But then, why doesn't Detective Bad know about it? Wait, what if... It's possible Mr. Faraday brought the knife in under the guise of prosecu prosecutorial evidence. He could have had them brought it out and attacked Mr. Rell with it. Huh. Maybe you've got a brain in there after all, kid. Uh, is he gonna treat me like a child forever? It looks like Mr. Faraday attacked Mr. Rell first, who then counterattacked. That's the only logical conclusion you can draw from a scene like this. Hmm, not yet. I feel like it's much too early to be drawing conclusions already. I must first find conclusive evidence so as to protect the honor of the Von Karma name. Detective Bad, do you have any thoughts on the case? Faraday and Rel. It looks like they killed each other, to me. Although, there are a few things that just don't seem right. What would they be? Huh. Why don't you try thinking on your own first before you bother me, boy? <laughs> well, now I'm being downgraded to just boy! Yeah, pal? I'm so excited, pal! This is my first real crime scene! Let's get investigating! Uh, Detective Gumshoe. I thought investigations were supposed to be conducted in a calm, collected manner. 
<laughs> what do you know about running an investigation, little boy prosecutor? I know that at the very least, I have a greater grasp of them than you of what happened here. Uh, why are you? You don't know any more than me, pal. Look, you just stay behind me, boy, and get out of the way. Ironic, coming from the guy that's been a step behind me the entire case. This is my first time setting foot inside the courthouse. Who would have thought it'd be for my first case as a detective? But you know, I get the feeling I'll be coming here a lot more in the future. As a suspect detective? Uh, of course not, pal! Anyway, this lobby's actually pretty luxurious. I mean, for a defendant lobby, it's got a pretty big TV. Oh! And that tea set on the table over there. Bet you didn't know I like to drink tea. Wow, this room's really decked out. If it means spending time in here, maybe being a suspect isn't a bad thing after all. I'm beginning to suspect that leaving this detective in charge of anything might be bad. But he is right. The room is rather well furnished. And somewhere in this room, the truth is slumbering. It's time to find it and give it a wake-up call. So, Detective Gumshoe. Yeah, what is it, boy? <sighs> of all people to call me that, this detective is by far the least qualified. I want to ask you about the investigation proceeding. See for yourself, pal! <sighs> Did I do a great detective bad or what? Is this man not a professional bone in his body? Uh, very well, then I will inspect the victim's bodies myself. There's some stuff in the bag, pal! I suppose this was Mr. Faraday's bag. It's probably the trial evidence I was supposed to collect from him. This is the evidence? Ah, I better not touch it! I'll leave prints on it! Do not just pay attention to anything you do. There are some plastic bags stacked up on the table. There's a tea set too, but there doesn't seem to be any sign of a disturbance. Yeah, the table's all neat and tidy. Maybe... They were super quiet in their scuffle. After all, I didn't hear anything from the hallway, you know? Maybe the plastic bags scattered on the floor are throwing us off. There are some plastic bags stacked up on the table. There's a tea set too, but there doesn't seem to be any sign of a disturbance. Yeah, the table's all neat and tidy. Maybe... They were super quiet in their scuffle. Oh, this is the same dialogue. This decorative plant's foliage is quite nice. It's actually soothing to be around. Hmm. Perhaps I should purchase one for my room. Ah, I see. Did you find something out? This is a competition, Miles, and as such, I'd appreciate if you didn't talk to me. Uh, as you wish. Looks like Mr. Faraday fell on top of Mr. Rowell. At first glance, it seems like they must have killed each other, however... Using logic, the only logical conclusion is... Ah! Uh -huh. Wow, I'm, su I'm surprised Gumshoe brought the word logic of his own accord. What was that outburst for? My detective's instinct just hit me real hard! It was Mr. Rell that fell first, see? You don't need a detective's instinct for that. It's common sense! And I suppose we won't know much more than that until after I examine the bodies. I won't rest until I've expected every suspicious nook and cranny. I like how seven years ago he was still saying this nook and cranny line. It looks like Mr. Faraday died while holding the gun in his right hand! So he shot Mr. Rell and then fell on top of him while still gripping the gun. I guess that does seem kind of strange, huh? I mean, why would Mr. Faraday know how to fire a gun? It's not exactly rocket science. Even I know how to pull a trigger. Although I doubt I'll ever need to use one. I hope I never have to fire a gun either, pal! It sure does look cool to hold a gun in your hands. It appears the police's screening procedures need a thorough review. Anyway, I should jot down some notes about the handgun in Mr. Faraday's hand. What kind of crimes do I want to see from an Ace Attorney game besides murder? Like, I do think... 
Some of my favorite cases in the series are the ones that don't start off with the murder. Like, there's only a handful of cases that, de that try to deal with things outside of just a murder. Like, we have a theft, but that ends in a murder. We have a kidnapping, but that ends in a murder. That's why I really like the Great Ace Attorney, because a lot of the trials in the Great Ace Attorney 1 and 2 subvert or avoid some of the common tropes that they do in all the other games. Same with the Investigations games, uh, especially Investigations 2. There's a lot of things it does that are outside of what the normal Ace Attorney series does, and that's what makes some of the twists and surprises more fun, because although the new Ace Attorney games, every time they come out with one, they do come up with new surprise twists and stuff like that too, but the freshness that Investigations and Great Ace Attorney brought to the series was just so much needed, I think. So I would like to see them do more non-murder cases. Or cases that are non-murder that also do not end with a murder happening sometime during the duration of it. Hmm? Why are there plastic bags scattered all around? Those bags are for keeping evidence safe, pal! I know that much, Detective. You sure are good at this stuff, aren't you, pal? Normally I'd be happy when someone compliments me, but when it's this guy... Anyway, could these plastic bags be evidence of a fight between the two men? His hand is all black down here, see? I wonder what it could be. Hmm, if you look closely, this blotching pattern resembles an ink stain. Oh, an ink stain? Yes, I usually get ink on my hand when I use my feather pen. A feather pen? I've never seen one before. Sure you aren't just making it up, pal. Mr. Faraday, how ironic it is for him to lose his life in a courthouse. Yeah, why'd it have to be like this? I don't know what to say. I can't believe this happened while I was on watch, pal! Rather than beating yourself up, you should spend your time continuing the investigation. Didn't you become a detective in order to solve crimes? Yeah. Then get back to work. Find out the cause of this murder. Right, I'm on it, pal! Percy killed a Kadopian Embassy staff member, and then he was murdered himself. This guy wasn't exactly an angel, you know. Oh? What makes you say that? Well, he's been hauled into the precinct several times for theft and assault, pal. So yeah, he's definitely the type to have committed a murder or two. Well, he did admit to killing Mr. Dead Man. Yeah, good point, pal. I knew my detective's intuition was telling me something. Detective's intuition. Yep. Do you know about it? It's a special feeling that all detect- We don't have time for this conversation right now. Let's return to the investigation. It looks like Mr. Rall died with a knife in his hand. There's some blood stuck on it. Then he must have used this as a weapon. Yep, no doubt about it. Was Mr. Faraday carrying this on his personage? Did he bring this as a piece of evidence for the trial? Or did he bring it with a very different intention in mind? I should jot some notes down about it. Mr. Rell's cause of death was from being shot, correct? Well, that's what we think, it's hard to tell with him lying face down. Death is bad enough, but it's truly lamentable that someone would try to hide the truth. Uh, are you sure they were trying to hide this? Are you sure they were trying to hide something? I can't confirm Mr. Rell's cause of death with his body positioned like that. Detective Bad, I'd like to examine the bodies in further detail if possible. What's this? You're not able to form a theory with the way they are. I believe an examination of the bodies is vital to finding the perfect evidence, don't you? Huh. I suppose you do have a point. Well, hurry up and get on with it. Labby. Yes, sir! We've taken the photos of the scene, sir. And there you have it. Do you not approve? Of course not. What? Investigation of a crime scene is the work of a detective, so don't touch a thing. Hey, big fella, turn over the bodies for me, will you? Okay. Please forgive me, Mr. Faraday, sir. Gumshoe, do not get emotionally involved. Remember, you're a detective. 
Yes, sir. Understood, sir. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. It looks like Mr. Faraday was stabbed with this knife that Mr. Rell is holding. Ouch! What's wrong, Detective? My stomach started to hurt from just thinking about being stabbed! Just keep your mind on the case, alright? Shot in the chest. It takes some guts to fire a gun in a courthouse! I mean, I've been a detective for a whole week and I still haven't found it, fired a single round yet! There aren't any burn marks on his clothes. That must mean... Wait, burn marks? A round grows very hot as it's discharged from a firearm. Therefore, burn marks usually left when a shot is fired from a point-blank range. Ergo, Mr. Rell must have been shot from at least a yard or two away. You sure do know a bunch of neat stuff for your age, pal! Apparently, this detective has as much common knowledge as your everyday marsupial. Oh. That's the same dialogue. There's something in his breast pocket. It's a fountain pen. Hey, you know, I've always keep a pencil behind my ear. It's because Detective Bad is always telling me. You should always write your name on everything you own. Yes, somehow you do strike me as quite a forgetful individual. Mr. Faraday is holding a gun in his right hand. That's the one Mr. Rell got blown away by, right? Labby, your answer. Yes, sir. We found the ballistic markings do match the gun. Oh, uh, ballistic markings are, uh... Are the figurative fingerprints a gun leaves on a bullet when fired. Every gun leaves its own unique ballistic markings. Therefore, by looking at the markings on a bullet, you could tell which gun it came from. Yeah, that's it! Uh, of course, I already knew about that, pal! Maybe you'd be better off going back to the Academy. Uh, come on, sir! Cut me some slack, will ya? So the bullet that was fired from this gun is what felled Mr. Rell. There's a knife wound in his chest here, see? I wonder if the wound matches the knife Mr. Rell is holding. Labby. Yes, sir. Verifying now, sir. Make it quick. From the look of things, one could deduce that the knife Mr. Rell is holding is what killed Mr. Faraday. Let us now try to understand how the two men died. First, Mr. Faraday took the gun and the knife out from today's trial evidence. And then he aimed the gun at Mr. Rell and fired. However, Mr. Rell managed to grab the knife and counter Mr. Faraday while being shot. Then the two men fell together where they stood. That is my theory, in any case. Hero, welcome to the stream! Thank you so much for stopping by! I hope you're doing well today. Good to see you! Hello, hello! What a crazy way to go! Still, something about that explanation just doesn't seem right. Hmm. I believe I now have a firmer grasp on what happened here. Hmm? Why are there plastic bags scattered all around? Those bags are for keeping evidence safe, pal! I know that much, Detective. You sure are good at this stuff, aren't you, pal? Normally, I'd be happy when someone compliments me, but when it's this guy. Anyway, could these plastic bags be evidence of a fight between the two men? Yeah, I'm really happy to be playing this remake as well. I really love these games. Especially Investigations 2. I'm so happy more people are going to be able to experience it now that it's officially in English. The window's open, and huh. There's a fresh, flowery scent in the air. Ugh, the flowers in the garden down there are so... Gross and ghastly. Do you think maybe you could try offering something useful for a change? Well, at least there's no way someone escaped through the window, pal. They wouldn't wake up and smell the flowers after a fall from the third floor. Are you willfully ignoring the fact that there are also iron bars on the windows? Yeah, I guess there's that too. Either way, no one could get through these windows, right? 
They thought of everything when they were designing this courthouse. Very nice. Whoa! Oh, what is a detective gun shoe? My TV at home is so tiny compared to this one, pal! Then perhaps you should purchase a more normal-sized television like this one. Oh, let me see here! Wow! This thing's huge! Oh. And way too noisy! You're the noisy one, Scruffy! Don't touch it! You'll get your fingerprints all over it. But I didn't touch it! Preservation of the crime scene is the foundation of detective work. The foundation, huh? Sounds like something the rookie here needs to shore up on. Okay, is it logic time? Ink with the ink. That splotch on Mr. Faraday's hand. I wonder if it might be the ink from his fountain pen. Oh, let's ask the lab guy! Detective Gumshoe! I confirm the substance on Mr. Faraday's hand is the ink from his fountain pen. Dang, these forensics guy- this specific forensics guy is very quick compared to all the other ones. I see! Good work! Uh, you know I've always wanted to say that, even if it was just one time in my life. Mr. Faraday wrote with his fountain pen in his left hand. I think it's fair to assume he was left-handed. It appears Mr. Faraday's pen is very important to our case as well. Okay, if you say so, pal! The tea set and plastic bags on top of the table are completely undisturbed. Plastic bags are strewn about the floor. There's a very tidy pile of plastic bags on the table. And yet, a portion of them wound up scattered on the floor as well. It's not likely the ones on the floor were knocked over during a struggle. In which case, might there not be another explanation on how they got there? Uh, another reason? I believe it's possible the blood on the outside of the bag is related somehow. Uh, please get that blood away from me, pal! Detective Gumshoe, whose blood is on this bag? Uh, hold on. Let me ask the lab guy. Alright, please hurry. Wait till you get a load of this, pal! It's Mr. Faraday's! Oh, and the technician said they didn't find anything else on or in the bag either. Hmm. It appears this bag is a very important piece of evidence. Okay, if you say so, pal. I'll leave it in your hands, pal. I guess there's not much left to investigate, huh? They really did kill each other. No. We can't conclude that quite yet. There's still something I find very peculiar here. The theory that they simply killed one another is too simplistic in this case. In fact, there's actually a contradiction that shows there's another possibility. No way, pal, really? Hmm, I suppose I'll just have to show you the contradiction in this crime scene. I won't rest until I've expected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Is this spot somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold? He was left-handed. Oh, I can examine it. Never mind, they have absolutely nothing to say about it. Oh wait, nope. Hmm, it seems Mr. Faraday was in the habit of using a very nice fountain pen. That's the total opposite of me! I don't get these things at all! Hmm, well, I think the pencil behind your ear suits you just fine. Really? You think so, pal? Man, I knew it was worth something. That wasn't exactly a compliment, Detective. Hmm, this looks like a quality nib. Hey, let me test it out, pal! Oh, this is really... 
Ah! I got ink all over my hand! Detective Gumshoe, don't ever play with the evidence like that again. Eureka! Now we come face to face with the contradiction I spoke of, and it's this. Mr. Faraday uses left hand to write with his fountain pen. Ergo, he is left-handed. And yet, the handgun is in his right hand. Don't you find it odd that left-handed Mr. Faraday would hold the gun in his right hand? We've actually had a lot of, uh... We actually have a lot of <laughs> contradictions so far in this game having to do with people being right-handed and left-handed. Man, ambidextrous people must mess up their cases so bad. My voice really suits Edgeworth? Oh, thank you, I really appreciate that. That, lady and gentlemen, is the great contradiction haunting this crime scene. Hey, you're right, pal! That does seem kind of strange. But how could something like that happen? The facts add up to one conclusion and one alone. Someone else put the gun in Mr. Faraday's hand after he died. Someone else? Plastic bags are scattered on the floor, and a gun in the wrong hand. I sense the presence of a shadowy figure behind this case. A person of vile intent who is serious about keeping the truth from us. September 10th, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Here's the autopsy report. Look at how short Francisca is. <laughs> It is probable that Mr. Rell survived for a short time after he was shot. However, Mr. Faraday died instantaneously from a stabbing. Interesting. How did they get a full-on autopsy report when the bodies are still lying in this room? Don't they need to be brought to like a lab to do like the full testing? It looks like we now know everything we need to know about this case. Are you sure we know everything? Of course. The incident began with Mr. Faraday attempting to get his revenge. The prosecutor went into a rage from being accused and tried to kill the defendant. But the defendant fought back and they ended up killing each other. It's all very clear and simple. There is absolutely no margin for doubt. Do you really believe that to be the truth? Ha! Are you saying that just because I figured out the truth before you... ...that you don't want to believe it's true? Ugh! <laughs> It's alright. If you disagree with my argument, then prove me wrong. Well, if there are any contradictions to be found, that is... Don't worry, I will. What happened? Mr. Faraday's death was instantaneous while Mr. Rell survived for a short time. From this, it's obvious that Mr. Faraday died after he shot Mr. Rell. And Mr. Rell, while on the brink of death, stole Mr. Faraday's knife and stabbed him. Those are the facts of this case. Mr. Faraday's death was instantaneous, therefore he must have attacked first. Proving that logic to be false is probably the fastest way to show her that she's wrong. In that case, I should first look for any holes in her theory. Mr. Faraday's death was instantaneous, while well, Mr. Rell survived for a short time. Hold it! You truly believe that Mr. Faraday died instantaneously? I have the murder report right here. Mr. Faraday died instantaneously of shock due to being stabbed in the chest. There, you see? It's been documented clear as day. Ugh. From this, it is obvious that Mr. Faraday died after he shot Mr. Rell. Mr. Faraday shot Mr. Rell before he died. Do you have any basis for that statement? Your foolishness has no end, does it? Now, I hate to repeat myself, however. Mr. Faraday died instantaneously. That's all the basis I need. Alright, so if Mr. Faraday died instantaneously, then he must have attacked Mr. Rell before being stabbed. You're finally beginning to catch on, I see. Yeah, like, it's becoming increasingly clear to me how quickly they got this autopsy report. And Mr. Rao, while on the brink of death, stole Mr. Faraday's knife and stabbed him. Hold it! So you believe the dying Mr. Rao stole the knife from Mr. Faraday? 
Mr. Rell became desperate as he did not want to die. Human beings can do amazing things when they are put to the test. So the two men struggled. And in the end, Mr. Rell was able to grab the knife and stab Mr. Faraday. The messy condition of this room is a testament to their struggle. Huh. Yes, my logic is perfectly sound. Can you really say that it's perfect? What are you insinuating? Nothing. However, I can't let you say what you said slide by without further inquiry. One must be clear and precise, so if you could append that statement to your testimony. Fine. They struggled, and Mr. Rell used the last of his strength to counterattack Mr. Faraday. Hold it! About the statement. Mr. Rell used all his remaining strength to take the knife and defend himself. One can easily see they had a violent struggle. Of course, it's nothing compared to what my riding crop can do. How does one compare the damage her crop can do with the state of this room? Furthermore, all the plastic bags on the floor in this room were scattered there due to the fight. Is there anything else I can explain for you? No, that will be fine. Those are the facts of this case. Hold it! Claiming speculation is fact already, don't you feel that evidence is a bit lacking? You'll find all the evidence you need just by looking around this room. Mr. Faraday collapsed on top of Mr. Rell. In addition, Mr. Faraday died instantaneously, making a counterattack impossible. Furthermore, the room is a total mess from their fight. How oh, hell, I dare I say, there's more evidence here that you could whip a whip at. Looks like she's becoming more and more confident. And looking at this place, she might have a right to be. After all, everything here seems to support her theory. It looks like you're starting to see my point. I have as good as won our little competition. There's something strange about Francisca's theory. I should compare her claim with the data I've gathered thus far. I just know there's a contradiction somewhere. His little wink and finger wag from Manfred is so... nerdy. <laughs> if the two men were fighting, their struggle would have surely caused quite a bit of noise. However, Detective Gumshoe testified he heard absolutely nothing. Ha! Huh, you place too much faith in that detective's testimony, you know. But for the sake of argument, let's say there wasn't a fight. How then did Mr. Rell get his hands on the knife? Mr. Faraday's bag was sitting right here in lobby number two. It's not hard to imagine that perhaps Mr. Rell saw a chance and took it out at some point. I really look forward to the next time we get to run into Callisto, because I love it every time she starts laughing at Edgeworth, it's so funny. So, what you're saying is this. Mr. Rell took a chance when he saw the opportunity, took the knife from the bag, and then Mr. Faraday shot Mr. Rell after being stabbed. Hmm. Isn't there something strange in Francisca's statement just now? Something's off. Wait, something doesn't add up. Oh really? It's simply not possible for Mr. Faraday to have shot Mr. Rell after being stabbed. Faraday died of a knife stab to the chest. The shock from the stabbing caused instantaneous death. Rel died of a bullet wound to the chest. There is no gunpowder burn on his clothes, suggesting he was shot from a few yards away. It's possible he was alive for a little while after being shot. Take that! According to the coroner's report, Mr. Faraday died instantaneously, meaning that he died immediately upon being stabbed by the knife. Ergo, he could not have possibly fired the gun after that. Oh, you got me. But of course. Well then, if the report is correct, then there is only one correct explanation. If we suppose Mr. Rell attacked first, then Mr. Faraday, who died instantaneously, would have been unable to kill Mr. Rell. Therefore, Mr. Rell must have stabbed Mr. Faraday after he was shot, then they both died. That is the only explanation that makes logical sense. Negating your opponent's ideas in order to prove your own theory. 
I see you've been studying, Francisco. I just want to explain it to you as simply as possible. Before you foolishly propose a foolish theory that only a foolish fool like you could... Like, you could. Hmm. How naive of you to believe your, only your opinions are valid. And still expect to discover the truth after the crime scene offers you. Francisca. You still got a ways to go. What are you talking about? Are you saying there's a flaw in my logic? Mr. Faraday died instantly. And the fact that he did is what gives rise to the contradiction in this scene. The contradiction here in this crime scene is... The order the bodies fell. Let me get this straight. What you're arguing is this. Mr. Faraday took the gun from his evidence bag and shot Mr. Rell. Then the wounded Mr. Rell found an opportunity to take the knife and strike back. Upon being stabbed, Mr. Faraday died on the spot and Mr. Rell died thereafter. If that's the case, then how do you explain this? Take a good look at the order in which their bodies are piled. N no Mr. Faraday's body is lying on top of Mr. Rell's. Therefore... Mr. Rell must have died before Mr. Faraday! I impossible Yes, I agree. But it seems strange no matter how what angle you approach it from. Which means the real mystery behind this crime scene Objection! that we must solve is... No, not so fast, Miles Edgeworth. What now? I simply think you ought to think a bit more outside the box. And that's- it's even clearer now, the incident started with Mr. Faraday's murderous intent! She sure bounced back quickly. An explanation won't be enough this time. I'm going to take some very decisive evidence to prove her wrong. What happened? Part 2. It was just chance that Mr. Faraday's body fell on top of Mr. Rell's. The two bodies fell into a pile. Which indicates that they attacked each other at the same time. It really doesn't matter in the slightest that they fell in the opposite order. I just know that Francisca's explanation isn't absolutely correct. All I have to do is find a hole in her logic. Once I do, I can then present her with the evidence that proves the contradiction. It was just chance that Mr. Faraday's body fell on top Hold of Mr. Rell's. About that. Uh, pressing someone's testimony in order to gain some time to think. You're a real one-trick pony, aren't you? It's too bad your trick only works on fools. But that wasn't my intent. I simply wish for more details as to how did Mr. Faraday end up on top of Mr. Rell. Huh. Someone's impatient. I was just about to explain everything to you. So do you think you could hold on for a minute? Ugh! Francisca, I'll make you a deal. I'll hold on if you hold on to that whip of yours. Oh, I'll hold on to it, alright, as I whip you. Ugh! Well, now that you've quieted down a bit, I'd like to continue, if you don't mind. The two bodies fell into a pile. Hold it. Two fell on top of each other. Don't you find that to be a bit strange? Not at all. Ugh. I can see it in her eyes. She's dead set against me from the bottom of her heart. Miles Edgeworth, once I'm done here, you'll see there's nothing strange at all. Now then, the two men fell into a pile. Which indicates they attacked each other at the same time. Hold it! What do you mean by they attacked each other at the same time? I assume Mr. Faraday had two different weapons in his hands. He made it to attack Mr. Rell while holding both the knife and the revolver. And then, after Mr. Faraday fired the gun, Mr. Rell grabbed the knife as he was falling and stabbed Mr. Faraday. That is how Mr. Rell wound up on the bottom with Mr. Faraday on top. At close range, that is more than possible. Yes, it's possible, but... Well, if you have any other ideas, then show me what you've got. Oh, I will. And to that extent, I'd like you to append what you just said to your testimony. Huh, I don't see any point to that, but as you please. The fact indicates they attacked each other at the same time from close range. 
You're saying they attacked each other at the same time from close range. Exactly. Mr. Faraday pointed the gun at Mr. Rell's chest and pulled the trigger. Mr. Rell then took the knife from Mr. Faraday and stabbed him before he fell unconscious. The dead Mr. Faraday instantly fell on top of Mr. Rell from the stabbing, pinning Mr. Rell under him, where he died shortly thereafter. And that's how they ended up on top of each other, with no contradictions to be seen. Hmm. It really doesn't matter in the slightest they fell in the opposite order. Do you really believe they fell in the exact opposite order in which they attacked? Miles Edgeworth, you're not listening to a word I'm saying. Ugh. They both attacked each other at the same time, and Mr. Rell fell first by chance, leaving Mr. Faraday to just happen to fall on top of him. Then Mr. Rell died shortly thereafter, pinned underneath Mr. Faraday. That's how it happened. So the two men attacked each other, with Mr. Rell randomly falling down first. The fact the order they attacked each other in varies from the order they fell in doesn't cause a problem for me. However, there's definitely one certain aspect I'm having trouble swallowing. I got you now. So you believe they killed each other at close range? Sorry, but that's impossible. Just as is written in the crime scene notes, the firing of the handgun did not leave gunpowder burn on Mr. Rell's clothes. Therefore, Mr. Rell and the gun must have been separated by a distance of at least two or three yards! Ah! Yes, this is by far the biggest contradiction. The two bodies are piled up on each other, yet the gun was fired from a distance. And with there being no chance Mr. Rell moved that far after being shot, that leaves only one possible explanation. What a completely foolish line of foolish thought from a thoroughly foolish fool! If I'm not right, then who was it that made the first move with the intent to kill, huh? Who? The person that attacked first with murderous intent. That would be... Here in this room. Contradictions appear no matter which man we claim attacked first. Thus, there can only be one explanation. There was a third person in here. Uh. It was that third person who killed both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell, and set their bodies up to make it look like a double murder. The third person is the real culprit. Miles Edgeworth, there's just one thing you're missing. Evidence, correct. Exactly. Everything you've said up until now is nothing but a story played out in your head. However, this is where the real test begins. Can you prove there was a third person involved in this crime? Of course. If a third person was truly here, that fact would resolve the glaring contradiction. The proof that this has all been a setup, made to look like they killed each other. I'll present it, and lay bare the final piece of the puzzle that's not yet in place. What is the piece of evidence that proves there's a third person involved? Take that! The gun in Mr. Faraday's hand, and the plastic bag with his blood on it. These two items point to the presence of a third person. How so? Recall Detective Gumshoe's testimony. I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single peep of a struggle. If there wasn't a struggle in this room, then there shouldn't be any plastic bags on the ground. Meaning someone else must have deliberately scattered them around. Ugh. Do you not see the possibility in this? Disregarding the gun for a moment, there's a high probability of blood splatter when a knife is used on a person. If the culprit held the knife with a plastic bag around it, they could use the bag to catch any blood splatter from when they withdraw the knife. Then by spreading a few more plastic bags around, mixing the bloody one within them, and arranging the room to make it look like there was a struggle between the two, they were able to conceal their presence! Aha! Looks like we've got a long way to go in this investigation.
Yes. Objection! What the heck's up with you, pal? Miss Bat, Mr. Bat, I advise you to place Detective Gumshoe under arrest. Oh, what? What's the meaning of this? Huh, looks like you're not man enough to discipline your own subordinates. Don't you dare. That detective claims he was there, standing in front of the door the entire time. But I have on good authority, it was all a giant lie. Ugh. Miss Yu, I ask you please explain that last statement. I'll let his honor explain it himself. Uh, I saw it with my own eyes, I tell you. During the recess, there was a period of time when there was no one in the hallway. What? See, Mr. Bad? So I ask you, why would a detective who was supposedly doing his job the whole time want to fabricate such a lie? Gumshoe, did you... did you kill Faraday? No! Of course not, sir! It would appear that the one who set this whole crime scene up is that detective, which basically renders his testimony as a complete lie and wholly invalid. It looks like your perfect logic has just come tumbling down, Miles. Ugh. I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single peep of a struggle. Was that statement really a lie? Detective Gumshoe. You are now a suspect in the murder of two men. Now spit out the truth or so help me. Uh, I haven't lied to anyone, sir, honest. I really was there. I was just in the hallway the whole time. Hold it! Detective Bad, I ask you please do not act without my permission. After all, I am the one that is heading up this investigation, am I not? Don't talk like you know what's going on, boy. All I want is for this investigation to run perfectly. Perfection is the only wish of a disciple of Von Karma, after all. Therefore, before you take Detective Gumshoe into custody, I'd like to set the record straight on something. And what's that? Hmm. What should I ask Detective, Detective Gumshoe about? I suppose the one thing I'd like clarified is Detective Gumshoe's motive for committing this crime. Huh. <laughs> motive, huh? Gumshoe, you got a grudge against Faraday or anything? No, sir! Not, not me! Not a single bad thing against Mr. Faraday, sir! Is that a fact? Objection. You really have a problem with lying, don't you, Detective Gumshoe? I'm telling you, I am not lying! The more unnatural you act, the more suspicious you become, you know. If you want a motive, Edgeworth, I have one for you right here. Could you please share it with us? However, be forewarned, I won't hesitate to object to flights of fancy. Because I'm all, all I'm interested in is the perfect explanation. <laughs> You're serious, aren't you? Fine. You amuse me, so I'll humor you with a little courtroom practice. It was about a week ago. I saw the detective get chewed out by livid Faraday in front of the precinct. He stood there super pale as Mr. Faraday yelled, That's a salary cut for you, you nitwit. A brand new detective suddenly getting his salary cut. That's reason enough for a grudge. Well, how's that for the perfect explanation? You totally misunderstand me, pal! No matter how mad I get, I could never hold a grudge! Quiet. We can't trust anything you say. Sir... Hmm, there's nothing wrong with the motive she proposed, per se. But there's some gaps in her logic that need to be filled in. This used perfect explanation may not be so perfect at all. 
I really like voicing Callisto just because she bursts out into laughter and it's so fun to do that. It was about a week ago. Hold it! A week ago. Then you and Detective Gumshoe are acquaintances. <laughs> no way! I only met him in person today. And then how did you know about Detective Gumshoe? Oh, I've seen him around before. I saw the detective get chewed out by a livid Faraday in front of the precinct. Hold it! Mr. Faraday was upset. Yeah, you know what else? Mr. Faraday isn't exactly known to get angry often. <laughs> but there he was, totally beat red in the face. <clears throat> and the offending detective just stood there, pale as a ghost, like he was about to die. Just like the face he's making now, right? Hey, Mundo, welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping by, it's good to see you. Hope you're having a great day. Ugh, I'm completely innocent, I tell you. <laughs> the poor man. <laughs> it was quite the scene with the detective. He stood there super pale as Mr. Faraday yelled, That's a salary cut for you, you nitwit. Hold it! You just stood there watching this unfold in front of you. Yeah, I have to say, it was really enjoyable too. But that's why I saw Detective Gumshoe earlier. I knew to steer clear of him. No way. Oh, I thought it was because I had something stuck on my face. <laughs> but you do! Huh? What I've got stuck on my face? Let's start with your eyes, nose, mouth, <laughs> and... Those ridiculous eyebrows. Huh? <laughs> oh man, messing with your head is just too much fun. It's you. If you don't mind, I'd like to return to your testimony now. <laughs> sure, why not? Dang, poor Gumshoe. <laughs> I like his eyebrows. Hold it. Cut a new detective salary right in front of the bat, right off the bat like that. I'm not really familiar with the way you guys relate, but is that a common practice? Uh, speaking of cutting my salary, didn't you threaten to do that to me earlier too? I suppose I did. It's only natural to cut a worthless detective salary down to their actual worth. My father can even fire anyone, new or old, with a snap of his fingers. Do you think maybe that's the reason enough for detectives to hate you people? Uh, well, I guess they really shouldn't cut people's pay. Yeah, way to stick up for your subordinate, <laughs> Detective Bad. Everyone's just ganging up on Gumshoe. Detective Bad, don't tell me Mr. Von Karma cut your salary earlier. Well, how's that for the perfect explanation? Hold it! Call your explanation perfect. <laughs> Is that not to your liking? Unfortunately for you, it's just not up to my standards. Oh? Is there something you want me to clarify in that case? What should I do? Should I raise an objection? Yes, anytime I get a chance! <laughs> objection. Alright, if you can clear one thing up for me. I understand Detective Gumshoe's potential motive for killing Mr. Faraday. However, what about his motive for killing Mr. Rell? His motive for killing Rell? Like I would know. Hmm. If there was no clear motive for both of the murders, then I doubt this incident would have occurred. Wouldn't you agree? Is there anyone else who might have had a grudge against either of these two men? Or should we look into that ourselves? Oh, in that case, I have absolutely no idea. What? Well, that's impossible. She must know something. <laughs> Wait! <laughs> Could you please not glare at me like that? It makes me laugh. <laughs> Ugh, I didn't even do anything! And you're already laughing away! Well, anyway, the way I see it, as long as he had a motive to kill one of the two... This crime would have played out the way it did anyway. 
Oh? Would you care to explain your logic? And this time, please try to provide a truly perfect explanation. <laughs> perfect this, perfect that. Stop being so uptight! Or is that a requisite trait for being a Von Karma? <laughs> Miles Edgeworth, I demand you shut this rude woman up! I wish you'd both be quiet, just for one second. <laughs> oh well. I guess I'll just have to explain it to you kids. Motive to kill the men. There's no one out there with a motive to kill both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. All you really have to establish is that someone had a grudge against one of the two men. Mr. Rell, who happened to be there, became a witness to Mr. Faraday's murder. Therefore, he was killed out of necessity. It's set up to look like they had killed each other. I wonder if that's really true. Is there no one out there with a grudge against both men? I should take another hard look at the evidence for this morning's case. The second KG-8 incident, as people are calling it, involving an embassy staff member, and the two men who both wound up as suspects in the case. Is there someone else I'm overlooking who is somehow related to them? There's no one out there with a motive to kill both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. Hold it! So there is no one who might have a grudge against both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. I suppose no one is a bit of a stretch. But I'm pretty sure no one like that was here in this courthouse today. She's lying through her teeth. We just saw someone like that here earlier. Besides, you don't need to prove the killer had a grudge against both men. All you really have to establish is that someone had a grudge against one of the two men. Hold it! Someone with a grudge against one of the men. In that case, aren't there plenty of other people who fit the bill? Sure, after all, who doesn't garner scorn from another simply by being alive? But the only person who held a grudge and acted upon it by killing was Detective Gumshoe. Ugh. Furthermore... Mr. Rell, who happened to be there, became a witness to Mr. Faraday's murder. Hold it! So you're saying that he was basically silenced. Aren't you glad you managed to avoid the same fate, Your Honor? Why, if you had been the one to witness the blood-covered detective... <laughs> oh, what?! Detective Gumshoe! You would kill even me! What?! Uh, I could never do something as terrible as that, Your Honor. There is no need for even a second of deliberation. I will hand down my verdict Attention! here. Your Honor, take a look around. We are not in court right now. It would be greatly appreciated if you would stay here with us in reality. Ah! Uh, please forgive me. I, I know not what I do. <laughs> and you there, Miss Yu, hurry up and continue with your testimony. If you fail to do so, I will whip you into shape! Haha, ha, that's nice. Sounds kinda like fun, actually. Anyway, Detective Gumshoe had to erase the witness, Mr. Rell. Excuse me? You? What did you just say? <laughs> that would be fun? Francisca never whips- well, Actually, no, that's a lie. I think she's whipped what I think she's whipped Maya at least once. I was gonna say she never whips women, but... Therefore, he was killed out of necessity and set up to look like they'd kill each other. Hold it! Hmm. I didn't do it, pal! No hard feelings, but I don't think we could take the word of a criminal seriously. Oh. But I can't even begin to think of ways to set up a crime scene. I suppose you do lack the necessary tactical mind required to do such a thing. Uh, why do you have to kick a man when he's down, pal? <laughs> you shouldn't put yourself down, detective. You're a big boy. I bet you thought it up all by yourself, right? Yeah, that's right. And I worked real hard at it, too. I think this proves one thing about the detective. He has the mental acuity of a worm. I have to admit, her explanation makes sense. However, there's also something she overlooked in her testimony. I should present that piece of evidence and see if I can't make her see the truth. Objection! 
Miss Yu, I believe there's someone you overlooked in making your statement. Or rather, is it because you'd rather not bring this person up? What do you mean? We are looking for someone with a reason to kill both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. I can think of at least one person that fits the bill. He was a suspect in the original KG-8 incident, and a member of the Kodopian Embassy staff, Mr. Manny Cochin. That's right, the very man who came to visit you earlier out in the hallway. The man who killed a member of the Kodopian Embassy staff, Mr. Rell, and the man who was the lead prosecutor of the KG-8 incident, Mr. Faraday. Are you telling me that Mr. Cochin had no reason at all to kill both of these men? Well... I suppose he might have a reason or two. You! You cover for me, pal! Maybe you're not such a bad guy after all! Don't get ahead of yourself. You're still a suspect, make no mistake about that. The perfect evidence, the perfect testimony. These are the only things I wish to hold. But I didn't do it! Hmm. You will stay under my authority and go investigate Mr. Manny Cochin for me. I remember, I will not be very forgiving should any- You want to investigate Cochin? You'd just be wasting your time. Why is that? Cochin was up in the viewing gallery, watching the trial. Or so I was told. Every cop in this place has been keeping an eye on the guy since he arrived. Then the only real suspect we have is still Detective Gumshoe. I suppose so. No way, come on Detective Bad! You gotta believe me, sir. I really was in that hallway the whole time, sir. I never took a single step into this room, sir. Okay then, are you saying there was someone else who passed through the hallway? I... No, there was no one else, sir. Then why should I believe you didn't do it? That is one incredibly foolish detective. Standing right in front of a crime scene all by himself. It's as good as a confession of guilt. I have to admit, it's a bit strange. Most criminals will fabricate some sort of lie to escape their crimes. And if that detective really wanted to prove that he is innocent, you'd think he would at least offer up the I spaced out while on duty or the like. Come on, Gumshoe, time for your interrogation. Detective Bad. Miles Edgeworth, I will go on ahead and report this to Papa. And that, as they say, is that! Right, everyone? Oh. Well, I suppose we should both be getting back to our real jobs now, huh? Before we do, Miss Yu, there's something I'd like to speak with you about. <laughs> what is it? Well, I guess I should keep looking around the room then. A pleasant breeze is blowing through this window. If only I could exchange it with the stifling atmosphere of this crime scene. The television has been left on to preserve the crime scene, of course. And it will stay on until the police are finished with their investigation. Do they think nothing of saving electricity? Ugh, how bothersome. Um, Edgeworth, that TV is clearly off. <gasps> well, I like how it says blunt underneath it. Because it's in reference to sharp. <laughs> That's pretty clever. It's Mr. Faraday's bag. The evidence for the trial of the Embassy staff's murder is in here. If things had gone smoothly, it would now be mine. I like how Callisto's still, like, laughing at him. <laughs> Including the two weapons in the double murder, the knife and gun, I suppose. She's just laughing at him. She's like, look at this idiot. <laughs> look at this nerd. Everything is neat and tidy on top of the table, with not a single disturbance in sight. To set these two men up and make it look like they killed each other. There's one thing I cannot forgive, it's the desecration of the dead. 
Who's he wagging his finger at? <laughs> oh, oh, Miles. <laughs> hey, wait! <laughs> Edgeworth! Where are you off to? Aren't you the one who wants to talk? Oh, yes. Sorry about that. Oh, dang it, I can't walk past her. I was gonna examine the plant. I love- see, again, I can't talk to her from this distance. I have to go, like, up into her face. So, what did you want to ask me about? The current case of the murdered Kodopian Embassy staff member. I've heard that people begun calling it the second KG-8 incident. Only among you law enforcement types. And? What about it? I'd like for you to tell me everything you know about the original KG-8 incident. I'm afraid I can't help you. I don't know anything beyond what was reported in the papers. No, I believe you know much more, since you are directly tied to the KG-8 incident. I'd appreciate it if you stopped with the false accusations. Baseless outbursts are useless both inside and outside the courtroom, don't you know? I do, but I also know that I do have a leg to stand on here. <laughs> Think you can stop making that ultra serious face in front of me? Ugh. If you could please stop laughing for just one second. I'm going to make any I'm not gonna make any headway like this. I'm just gonna have to show her. Exactly how related to the KG8 incident she is. Miss Yu, I believe that I have proof of your connection to the KG8 incident. That file is your proof. Very well then. Why don't you tell me exactly how I'm related to the KG8 incident? Your connection to the KG8 incident is through the victim. The victim's name is CCU. You will note that she has the same last name as you. Can you really still tell me with a straight face that you are not related to this case? <laughs> Sorry. We're not related. What? Just kidding. You asked that question with such a serious look on your face. That I couldn't help but... <laughs> Miss Yu, I ask you please tell me the truth. <clears throat> All right, I'll tell you everything I know. As you guessed, the one who reported the smuggling activities of the Amano group was my sister, Cece Yu. As I thought. And she was killed right before she was to testify at the impending trial by Manny Cochin. But because he was tried once and was acquitted, he gets to live out the rest of his cushy life completely carefree. All because of a lack of evidence. No, I heard the evidence to convict him did exist. What? I heard it from Mr. Faraday himself after Mr. Cochin's trial was over. Apparently a man in black made off with the most important piece of evidence. Then the evidence had been tampered with. Isn't it just like a criminal to do something like that? The smuggling ring being run out of the Amino group by one of its secretaries. They bailed Mr. Cochin out. Turns out they were in league with each other all along. How big was that smuggling ring? Was it a large operation? I don't really know. Which is why I wanted to become the lead defense. On this case, the people are calling the second KG-8 incident. But I haven't learned anything new at all. I was probably expecting too much, I know. You mean you think this case has nothing to do with the smuggling ring? I don't know what to think. Why did Mr. Cochin want to meet with you earlier? Actually, he came to watch the trial. Apparently, he only found out I was the defense lawyer on this case after he'd arrived. He figured he should say hi. And one other thing. Looks like you couldn't resolve anything this time either. Too bad. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> oh boy, stop it with a scary face already. I'm fine, really. I gave him a good slap across the face. 
The way she talks about slapping him as she laughs away is kind of creepy. Ahem. But it's just as Mr. Bad said. He's not related to the double murder. I asked around, and people in the gallery claim he was in his seat the entire time. Talk about cruel fate. Well, this is about all I know. Uh, sorry. Guess I wasn't much help, huh? That's not true. I'm sorry I made you recall such a painful time in your life. <laughs> Edgeworth, you really are too serious for your own good. You really need to learn to relax. We wouldn't want you to die of stress, would we? Thank you for the advice, but there's no need to worry. I work in my own way, and I will catch this criminal in my own way as well. You'll see. <laughs> Look at you with your game face on, ready to go! I'm making no such face! Did you know, laughter is the best medicine, Edgeworth. Don't you get tired of making such a serious face all the time? I'm charged with making sure all the criminals of this world are found guilty. I have no need for laughter. There you go, making that face again. Oh well. I've got to get going. I still have a few loose ends I need to tie up. The KG-8 incident and this murder investigation. It is my belief these two cases are related to each other somehow. Plus that detective. Detective Gumshoe. It's obvious he's lying, even though the lie is hurting his chances. Clearly this case is far from over. But whether or not that detective is the murderer can only be determined once I completed my perfect investigation. Mr. Von Karma, I swear to uphold your honorable name, or my name isn't Miles Edgeworth. To be continued. Oops, no, I don't want to save it in the empty slot. I want to save it here. Well, I guess I have two slots now. <laughs> September 10th, 4.45 p.m. District Court, 3rd Floor, Lobby. Sir? What is to become of the trial into the Kadopian Embassy staff member's murder? Indeed, since both the suspect and the prosecutor are now dead. The case will be dismissed. In other words, the trial ends here prematurely. Huh. Looks like you have to wait just a bit longer for your big debut. <laughs> wait, look at the officer just lying on the couch in the background. And the other one looking at the model. They look so relaxed, even though a murder just happened. I suppose it can't be helped. The evidence for this trial will be transferred to you in a little while. Sir, what do you think about the murder of the Kadopian Embassy staff member? And the murders of Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell? What an outrageous circus it has all become. That Faraday brought it upon himself with his naivete. An outrageous circus? Right, sir. I grow wary of this topic. Edgeworth, I will have you assigned to a different case. Papa, you'll come and watch my courtroom debut next, won't you? Hmm, I'll consider it. Sir, if I may, if I may, please allow me to continue my investigation. Whatever for. I know that there is already a suspect in the murder of Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. However, there's not enough evidence to prove that it was he who committed the crime. I'd like to continue investigating in order to find the perfect proof of his guilt. The perfect proof. Don't make me laugh. A worthless person like you has no right to claim such a thing as perfection. Um, Papa? Who do you think is the real culprit behind these murders? Miles and I, we're competing to see who can find the real killer first. Plus, being able to investigate a real crime scene is a really rare opportunity. It would give us some real-life experience, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> if you want to investigate this case that much, then do as you wish. Then, you're allowing us to continue. In court, your top priority is to win, and a solid investigation is one of the keys to winning. We have to make sure you become recognized as a first-rate prosecutor, don't we? It wouldn't be very interesting. Otherwise, I'm returning home now. Edgeworth, Francisca, 
See to it I'm not disturbed, save for the results of your competition. Yes, sir. Of course, Papa. Francisca. Thank you. What are you thanking me for? Your logic earlier was built on that scruffy detective's lie. That means the competition is still on. Yes, just as you wish. Huh, I couldn't let you get off so easily. Now then, let's see how well you fare on the investigation from here, Miles Edgeworth. I know I don't have enough information yet. So my first order of business will be to question anyone involved with this case. I want to talk to this guy. Why? Sometimes when I'm walking around in this game with a remake, it's a little choppy. I don't know if that's on purpose to like simulate the DS feel or if it's just a... Hmm. Then again, this game is also on like PlayStation and Steam too, right? So I wonder if it does the same thing there too. Sir! Nothing to report, sir! Is there no one who will make this man take responsibility for his actions on the job? Looks like we have no choice but to report this to Papa. Then this guard can have fun in a waking nightmare after being awakened from his dream. Actually, let's not. I kind of feel sorry for him now. But he's saluting in his sleep! Uh, what's the matter, officer? I've been standing here for forever, sir, and I really need to go to the bathroom! Why don't you just make a quick trip? The nearest one isn't that far, is it? No, it's a short way down the hallway beyond these doors, but... I don't want to be blamed for anything that might happen while I'm gone. So, I'm gonna hold it! Perhaps Detective Gumshoe could be a positive influence on the Force after all. <laughs> this area is restricted to authorized personnel only, sir. If I'm not authorized personnel, then what, may I ask, do you think I am? Uh, the younger sibling of a dysfunctional relationship. I am not the younger one, he is! Now get that straight in your head! I believe there is more objectionable part you should be upset over, Francisca. What's this guy doing? I can't stop the water, sir! It seems the man who was here earlier broke it by drinking from it too much. Bunch of fools who pretend not to see the foolishly foolish actions of a foolish fool! Well then, why don't you, lead the, why don't you lend the officer a hand? Huh, as if I should have anything to do with this. Besides, that water-drinking fool's mouth is the thing the officer should be covering. Let's give that officer a description of the water guzzler later. She seems to have quite the grudge. Sounds to me like someone wanted a drink. Wait, Francisca's with me, so I can talk to her like this. Yes, what is it? It feels like there's a whole backside to this case we're not seeing. And here we thought it was a case where the two men had killed each other. We're lacking in information. As a Von Karma, I could hardly call this a perfect investigation. Indeed, it is as you say. Ugh, I can't believe we agree on something. Just what is so revolting about agreeing? Anyway, our first move should be to speak with anyone related to the case. Indeed. Even if you had not said it, I was planning to do so anyway. Ugh! What was that lash for? Wait, what if I rub this in her face? Do you think you can win this competition by simply showing that to me? Not at all. In fact, I was planning to thank you. I wouldn't be a prosecutor today without you and your father. I didn't really do much. You became a prosecutor first, that's all. But just you wait and see, Miles Edgeworth. Very soon, I'll be a prosecutor too. Good, that we could both send criminals away together as colleagues. Huh. But you can be sure I will always get more convictions than you. It's almost cute that she's going this far to insist she'll always win. Wow, this thing is so incredibly detailed! My inner modeling fanboy is impressed. Mm, I'm not exactly a fan of plastic models, per se. <laughs> oh, you say that now, Edgeworth, just you wait. In seven years. But even I can sense the superb quality of this model. I simply cannot comprehend how that man can feel so much love for such a trifle. Oh? Uh, I see. You're a disciple of my father. So you would do well to guard yourself against an interest in such unproductive things. Yes, perhaps I should take upon whipping people like that young lady over there. 
I'm gonna talk to Gumshoe and you after. Let's just explore for a bit. Oh, we're in here. Oh, I can w Hey! <laughs> this must be the judge's desk. You can tell by the gavel sitting on top. I had a dream once I was being squashed from above by this gavel. You're such a weakling, Miles Edgeworth. You have no idea how frightening it was. He had the same dream as Phoenix. The dream that Phoenix turned into his level 2 super in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. <laughs> Look, Francisca started going the opposite direction. I juked her out. Look. Gotcha. <laughs> it's the viewing gallery. Oh, she's talking to me from over there. It's the viewing gallery. This is where the riffraff sits when they want to watch. It's situated in the same height as the judge's bench. I wonder if that's to represent the intense scrutiny of each and every case from all sides. Miles Edgeworth, are you or are you not man enough to stand up to all those eyes? What sort of- Of course I'm man enough. Hey, Francisca. You gonna catch me? Francisca. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh. <laughs> are you confused? Whoa, am I over here? Or am I over here? <laughs> You'll never catch me! <laughs> oh, she's almost caught me! <laughs> okay, I'm done messing. Can't go behind this... Can't go behind this bench. Any day now, I'll be taking my rightful place behind this bench. By that time, I should already be standing here. It'll be downright disgraceful if I beat you to it, wouldn't it? If that were to happen, Francisca, I'll eat my cravat. It's a defense attorney's bench. I'd probably be standing on the side of the courtroom if that incident hadn't happened. What are you thinking about? Lately, the more wrinkly your face becomes, the less I'm able to read what you're thinking. Ugh, I never. I'll have you know I don't have a single wrinkle upon my youthful brow. Oh, I got an achievement. But you do have gray hair, though. It's the witness stand. I'll make sure that each and every person that ever stands here will be found guilty. There are others besides the defendant that stand at this podium, you know. I don't care! Just make sure you never end up standing at one of these. Or you'll be sorry. I'll keep that in mind. Yes, Edgeworth will never be standing behind one of these. Cue the laugh track. <laughs> it's a bookshelf. Hmm? What's this? Judges Trial Exchange Log. It appears to be a journal where the various judges share their thoughts and ideas. The real daily lives of the judges are laid out here on these pages. There's nothing about the court in here. It's just page after page, or there's nothing about the court in here. It's just page after page of unrelated drivel. Judging by the content, they are very enthusiastic about the courthouse's daily menu. And it would appear that fried oysters are a favorite. I have no use for such foolishly foolish words from the foolishly foolish crowd. Someone please assure me that this is not the true state of the country's judiciary. Miles Edgeworth. Yes? What is the meaning of this bulletin board? Why are there so few trials posted? Hmm, it would appear that the entire week is devoted to Mr. Rell's trial. Is the crime rate really that low in this country? Or maybe... The police lack the proper motivation to get out there and catch the criminals. I'm afraid I can't comment on that, however... I can say I have my doubts about the younger detectives. Sounds to me like they're in need of a stricter hand. And I'll start my discipline regimen with that pathetic, filthy-coated detective. I feel bad for the big guy, and yet I can find no suitable reason to stop her. It's an incredibly detailed model, isn't it? I heard that it costs as much to make it as it costs to build the courthouse itself. What was the point of making such an expensive model? I felt the exact same way upon hearing it. Ugh, it's so hard to understand such foolishness. Agreed. Miss Yu. Oh, it's you, Edgeworth. And... Who are you? Wait, you were at the crime scene just now, weren't you? You should be disbarred for not knowing who I am. I am Francisco von Karma, and I am about to become the successor to the family name. 
About to. I guess that means for now you're still just a kid. In which case, it's only natural I didn't know who you are. What? Oh, why are you whipping me? <laughs> anyway, it looks like they're planning to hold the evidence a bit longer. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's waiting. I'm terribly sorry, but I have a few more questions to ask of you. <laughs> Look at you eyebrows scrunch with lines on your forehead. And that... <laughs> To ask of you. <laughs> what exactly is so funny? <laughs> Sorry. I'm just bad at dealing with a super serious atmosphere. Apparently they failed to teach you proper behavior at a crime scene in law school. Uh, whew, I feel much better now. So, what is it you want to talk about? I'd like to inquire as to where you were at the time of the murder. We were in defendant lobby number one the whole time up until we heard the gunshot. And by we, I mean Mr. Bad. If you don't believe me, feel free to ask him yourself. You were with Detective Bad? Why? We had a little something to discuss, that's all. So I take it your acquaintances with Detective Bad? Yeah, he was the detective in charge of the KG-8 incident. Detective Bad is also related to that incident. That's right, he was the one who was supposed to protect my sister, Cece. But you know how that turned out, don't you, Edgeworth? Miles Edgeworth, I have no idea what you two are talking about. I've heard of the KG-8 incident from my papa. But how does that case relate to you, Miss Yu? The victim of that case, CCU, is my little, sis my little sister. <laughs> You're making a super serious face again. I'm fine, really. I just make it a point to rub some more salt in his wounded pride every time I see him. The way she talks about doing that as she laughs away is kind of creepy. Oh, speaking of Mr. Bad, he and Mr. Faraday. I'd say they met up just about every single time the Yadagarasu made a move. It was practically a given the two would meet up at every one of the crime scenes. I see. He didn't mention he is in charge of the Yadagarasu investigation earlier. Maybe I should ask her what she knows about the Yadagarasu in more detail. You claim that at the time of the murder, you were with Detective Bad. But don't you lawyers usually discuss the trial with your clients during a recess? We do, and that's what I was planning to do. But Mr. Faraday was being rather threatening, and he dragged Mr. Rell away. After that, Mr. Bad came into lobby number one, so we just stayed there and talked. And what did you talk with Detective Bad about? <laughs> nothing interesting. I just insulted him some. Talked about how the trial was going, and... Then I insulted him some more. Bloody... When she's not laughing, her mouth seemingly spews nothing but insults. Anyway, Mr. Bad and I were in defendant lobby number one when the murders occurred. So really, I can't tell you anything about the hallway or lobby number two. I see. I'd like to ask you a few questions about your client, Mr. Mackerel. Now, your client first claimed to be the Yadagarasu, is that correct? Yeah. Once I heard that it was the Yadagarasu that made off with the evidence from the KG-8, I began to ask Mr. Rell all sorts of questions, but to no avail. Turns out Mr. Rell was not the Yadagarasu. He had just made that up. He made it up. Mr. Rell's crime was caught on by tape by the security cameras, but there is no footage of him sneaking into the Kodopian embassy itself. Hold on for just a second. Then you mean to say that you knew he was not the real Yadagarasu? And he was just another cold-blooded killer, and you're ready to defend him. Yes, that's right. I see. So a defense lawyer is actually just someone whose job is to cover for criminals. That's why defense lawyers are so detestable, but they're no match for us Von Karmas. <laughs> I don't believe it, you're serious. Why don't you save that face for something really worth being serious about? And Edgeworth, do you remember what I said earlier? I... Pff, have my own agenda. Pff, I'm still on the hunt for leads regarding the KG-8 incident, alright? And for that, you have not a single qualm about defending a known killer. Don't put words in my mouth. I said no such thing. The only way I had to get close to Mr. Rell was to be his lawyer. I had no intention of covering for him, ever. So you don't you dare suggest I was going to. 
I'm sorry. Forgive my rashness. Miss Yu, I was wondering if you could tell me about the Yadagarasu. The Yadagarasu, huh? You don't really know that much about that- I don't really know much about that character myself. But I do get a lot of consultation requests from companies to defend them. Requests from companies. The Yadagarasu isn't some petty thief out for money, you know. Huh. Alright then, perhaps the Yadagarasu is in the business of stealing people's lives. You're not very funny, or witty, are you, little Miss Von Karma? Ugh. Francisca, be careful about who you whip. Choose carefully or you may be sued by- Ugh. There. I chose carefully, just like you wanted. <laughs> that just now was hilarious, little missy. Of course it was. What is wrong with these two women? Why does my pain give them delight? And, so in the end, what is the Yadagarasu? I have to say, I'd never even heard of this thief when I was in Germany. The Yadagarasu deals in information. Namely, in digging out dirt about backroom dealings and the like of companies. The Yadagarasu is a vigilante who steals such info and makes it public for all to see. Huh. Vigilante or not, this person sounds just like another criminal to me. I suppose you could put it that way too. But either way, I get a lot more clients now, thanks to that thief. Sounds like Miss Yu's profiting nicely. Hmm. I suppose I've gotten all I can out of Miss Yu. I should move on and speak with Detective Gumshoe now. Detective Gumshoe. Hey, it's you, pal! You're here! Yowch! As am I. I don't think you need to whip him to let him know that. I didn't do it, pal! I swear on my honor as a detective! I really didn't! Your words are useless. I place my trust only in the evidence, detective. Once the investigation is fully over, should we find out you are the killer, there will be no mercy to be had for you. Have a heart, pal. Hmm. But you're not worried, right? After all, you have nothing to worry about if you really are innocent, then. That's right! Hey, pal! Go do your perfect investigation! Get the real killer for me, will you? Hmm. I would have done so even had you not requested me to, detective. So you and Mr. Faraday had a small meeting last week, did you? What exactly did you do to make him so angry? I just asked Detective Bad the same thing myself, pal. Turns out he was mad at me because on my first day as a detective, I reported into my usual post instead of the Criminal Affairs Department. By the time I got down to Criminal Affairs, I was really, really late. And that's when he gave me that huge speech. I remember doing the exact same thing at elementary school. On the first day of school every year, I always wind up going to my old classroom. How pathetic for the detective to be comparable to a mere school child. You claim to be standing guard in front of the door to lobby number two during the recess. However, when did you receive the order to do so and from whom? Uh, earlier, around 3.20, and from Detective Bad Pal. Today's trial took a really crazy turn, so I was told to make sure nothing happened to Mr. Faraday. And yet, something did happen to him, correct? It looks like it was a total waste of manpower to assign you to guard duty. Yeah. Your words sting worse than your whip, pal. So it was Detective Bad who ordered him to stand guard, huh? Now then, Detective Gumshoe, is there anything else you'd like to tell me? Uh, nope, not a thing, pal. In that case, allow us to take a look at what you're carrying on your personage. Ugh! Wait! You can't do that! There's nothing of any particular value here. Well, my handcuffs and badge were confiscated by Detective Bad, so you know... What is that open envelope I see sticking out of your coat pocket? Ah! Hands off, pal! Just show it to us already. Yeah! Annual bonus check within. Five dollars total. 
except there's no check inside. You've had your look, now give it back, pal! It's my first bonus as a brand new detective! I just got it and cashed it today! I had literally no cash on me up until I did, you know? So that envelope is really special to me, now give it back! You don't need rubbish like this, don't worry. We'll throw it away for you later. How could you? Oh, poor Gumshoe. I can understand him being a little sentimental over that. Come on. I'm sorry, but I need to take him in for questioning now. I think I've asked him just about everything I needed to. No, wait. Since he became a suspect, there is one piece of evidence I should reconfirm. Officer, I ask you wait a second. I still have one thing I'd like to reconfirm with Detective Gumshoe. Understood. But please make it brief, sir. I want to hear from the horse's mouth. I must confirm whether or not his testimony about whether the crime occurred is the truth. No, I don't, I don't mean to be examining the bookshelf. I'm clearly not standing in front of the bookshelf. You told me earlier you heard no sound other than the gunshot out in the hallway. Is that correct? No mistake about it, pal! Hmm. Then you were also claiming no one passed through the hallway either. Is that also correct? Yep, not even a single ant passed through that hall while it's on duty. Huh. Hmm. You do realize the lie you're telling is only making life more difficult for yourself. Huh? Oh. But it's true! I don't see anyone go through the hallway, and I didn't hear anything else, pal. I bet the killer found a way to kill the guys, that's beyond what I can imagine. So he intends to continue telling this ridiculous lie. Why would he do so given the situation he's in? I believe a thorough investigation of the hallway in front of the defendant lobbies is in order. Oh, you! <laughs> How could you have not noticed that coming? Ugh. Wasn't that that child I changed money for earlier? Thanks, that's exactly what I needed. Kids can sometimes be so cruel. It looks like she dropped something. Oh, I guess I guess uh, Old Bag's theme does play at a couple times other than talking to her, huh? Because this is Old Bag's theme, noisy people. Maybe we should arrest the girl. She might turn out to be a valuable lead. Mm. I believe some sort of punishment may need to be dealt the next time we meet. I believe I've asked all I need of this man. Now for Detective Bad and the Judge. We have to confirm who is correct, the Judge or that scruff face, right? I suppose we should inspect the hallway in front of the lobby number two next, then. Hmm, I suppose so. Shall we head on over, Francisca? So, did you see anything else? Hmm, no, I don't think so. I see. Well, thanks for your cooperation. Oh, it's nothing. Just doing my duty as a defender of the law. That'll be all for now. I'll ask if I have any other questions. Anytime, detective. <laughs> it's weird to see the judge standing. I agree. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a few loose ends I have to tie up. Oh, you're that new prosecutor Mr. Von Karma recommended, right? My name is Miles Edgeworth, Your Honor. And I'm Manfred Von Karma's daughter, Francisca Von Karma. I'm set to become the successor to my genius father any day now, Your Honor. I see, Mr. New Prosecutor recommended by Von- Ah! I bit my tongue. 
But you're right, Your Honor. Please feel free to refer to me as just Miss Von Karma, Your Honor. As for him, just Edgeworth is fine. Apparently somebody doesn't feel I'm worthy of a proper title. Oh! Very well then. I shall call you Miss Von Karma and Mr. Prosecutor Edgeworth. Your Honor, Mr. Edgeworth is fine, sir. Now about your earlier testimony. Yes, what about it, Mr. Edgeworth? I would like to ask you a few questions about what exactly you saw. Alright, after all, it's my duty to clarify my testimony as a defender of the law. I greatly appreciate your cooperation, Your Honor. Now the first thing I will need to do is figure out that detective's exact movements. I love these detectives. Like, look at them just <laughs> randomly brushing things. There are no signs this fire extinguisher was used in the crime. If you could already tell from a distance, then why are you wasting your time examining it? Francisca, let's not try to rush absolute genius. He's making a most ridiculous looking face. That may be, but at least he doesn't look like someone who would tell a lie on purpose. I suppose, but to a Von Karma, evidence is the only thing that carries any weight. Of course. At any rate, this poster seems to be of no use to us now. Have you found any suspicious fingerprints, officer? Nope, just the fingerprints of those involved with the case, sir. I guess we know all the players in this case then, huh? It would appear that way. But I have the nagging feeling we're missing something. And I suspect what we're missing is hiding right here in the crime scene somewhere. Did you find something, officer? I think there's a five dollar bill back there, come on! Just a little more. Is there no one working this crime scene who isn't a total waste of living tissue? Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a single person we can deem useful here. It doesn't look like there's anything contradictory left in this area. Hmm, I suppose not. Perhaps I should check somewhere else. Huh. It would appear this vending machine sells snacks and various other foods. Just lovely. What will they think of next? Don't be a jerk in a court like these beef jerks. One packet for nine dollars. Defendant's fresh milk. One half pint for seven dollars. Stay neutral as the Swiss do until the end with these for six dollars. <laughs> okay, I think the Swiss roll thing there is a little bit of a stretch. They're awfully overpriced. The lineup is simply awful. Period. Speaking of snacks, I wonder if that Swiss roll the little girl dropped is from this machine. Hmm, I was wondering about that myself. Don't let the prosecution and the defense make a ham sandwich out of you. It sounds like it's directed at a ham of a judge. Well, it certainly isn't directed at me. I can outmaneuver him any day. Don't be a jerk in court like these beef jerks. I see. Objection! Miles Edgeworth, wouldn't you agree that it's a very clever pun? Do you really think they put that much effort into the product name? Even a foolish fool could understand the foolish thinking of the fool who made it up. You acted so foolishly, I got so thoroughly mad, now I'm utterly famished. If you wanted a pack of these, all you had to do was ask like a normal person. When you're in hot water, you might need a hot dog. Hmm. It looks like this slogan was decided through a public contest. And the winner was... Prosecutor Winston Payne. Huh. What a pathetic slogan. No presence at all. Now, if it were up to me, it would read... If you leave matters in the Von Karma's hands, everyone in court will be found guilty dogs. Objection! Overruled. Oh, Winston Payne. I like how they say, like... It's completely, like, unnoticeable, just like how he goes completely unnoticed by them. When it's looking bad, blind your opposition with some OJ. Are they promoting violence? Don't worry, my whip will make sure anybody following this advice won't be for long. Compared to the sting of a whip, the sting of an orange juice may not be so bad. 
Defendant's fresh milk. What exactly is that supposed to mean? I bet it means the milk is freshly milked by various defendants on trial right now. No, I think it might mean this was milked right here from various defendants. Miles Edgeworth, you can't possibly be serious. Of course not. Stay neutral as a Swiss do until the end with these. The end of what? Well, I suppose it means the end of the trial. I suppose this mean I suppose this means that one should eat these during a recess. You can't eat during a trial, so I suppose the only time you can eat them is now, huh? I wouldn't mind if you wanted to eat one now. They come in packs of two, after all. Huh. We're in the middle of an investigation. Besides, I don't have six dollars on me. If you want, we could pool our money and buy a pack together. If you have to split it with you, then I don't want it. And don't, don't think too much about what Edgeworth said about the milk. Oh, thanks for calling Kirby. You have nothing to say about this? I won't rest until I've expected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. I can look outside, however, I doubt the killer could have escaped through here. Of course not, this is, is the third floor after all. Hmm, it appears the bars were installed on this to prevent people from falling out. Bars? What bars? Can you not see them from your vantage point? Ugh! What? I must remember not to bring up that taboo subject again. Ugh! What's the matter? I pricked myself on one of these cactus's needles. I didn't think the needles on this thing would be so sharp. Well, what did you expect? Could you imagine how bad it would be if you were hit on the head by one of these? Anyway, this cactus seems to be unrelated to our case. You really think so? Because I believe this cactus sitting on this windowsill is completely related. Oh, well, I look forward to hearing your explanation on how exactly it's related. Hmm? What is this? It's a pink-colored piece of trash made of rubber. Hmm, I feel like I've seen something like this before. Well, all I see is a piece of garbage. But you know, the fact that there is a litter running loose inside this courthouse is simply unforgivable. Ugh! It's not like it was I who littered. Rubbish belongs in a rubbish bin. Ugh! The ants are hard at work carrying their food home. It's a marvel they can pick up such comparatively large objects to their size. Well, if you want to carry the mighty Von Karma name and not be squashed under it, you'd better work extra hard just like these ants. Same goes for you, Francisca. Ants are pouring out of the hole in the bench as well. I wonder if the inside of this bench consists of nothing but ants. Who should dare continue with that gross line of thought? Ugh, I'm sorry. The dirt on this bench, it smells like some sort of sweet substance. I can't believe there's someone going around dirtying the courthouse. For shame. Hold it! Calm down, Francisca. Now take a good look. Doesn't the smudge look kind of like a handprint to you? I suppose it could be. Which means... That perhaps we can lift the prints of the person who sullied this bench. I see. And then we'll know the identity of our mystery slob. You there, the lab technician. Could you please find out who this handprint belongs to? Sir, yes sir. I got the results of the fingerprint analysis, sir. And, do we know who they belong to? Sir, the fingerprints belong to Detective Gumshoe. Oh, interesting. Good work, officer. And there you have it. Yes, I suppose so. Now we know the identity of the person who dirtied the bench. I sense that you and I will be using this information in very different ways. What are these black spec speckles? I believe it's a pile of ants eating away. 
Oh, that detective, he claims that not a single ant slipped by him. And yet here's a whole hill of them. Ugh! Why are you hitting me for? As a replacement for that pathetic detective. Ugh. Perhaps I should add this deduction to the detective's growing tab of pay cuts. Anyway, I wonder what the ants are eating. From the look and sweet smell of it, pieces of cake and chocolate from a Swiss roll. Miles Edgeworth, the courthouse is to be kept pristine at all times. Ugh! It wasn't me that dropped the food on the ground. The courthouse! Must be! It's clean! Ugh! Okay, I guess it's time to talk to Mr. Judge. Your Honor, I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Where were you at the time of the murder? Do you suspect me of something? No, nothing of the sort, Your Honor. Ahem. Uh, very well, you may continue with your testimony. Your Honor, it's your testimony I'm after. Oh! I had no idea you were chasing after me or my testimony. I'm beginning to sense I might want to avoid being in a trial run by this judge. <laughs> you say that now, Edgeworth, but, uh, hmm, bad news for you, man. Well, let's see here. How then should I put this? When you get to be my age, you need to pay more frequent visits to the restroom. Hmm. If you go take a look through the window at the end of the hall, you'll see a small window. That is the window to the men's restroom. In other words, you can see clearly into this hallway from the men's restroom. When I was going into the restroom, that detective... Gumshoe, is it? Well, he was standing in front of the vending machines, buying something from it. Hmm. However... And this I couldn't believe. When I was about to exit the restroom, there was not a soul in the hallway anymore! Your Honor, if you could please calm down and explain to me rationally. Oh, I'm really sorry. Please let me regain my composure. It was really suspicious. That's what my finely honed judge's intuition said. Although, well, until the murders occurred, I just sort of brushed it off. Oh. Apparently this judge doesn't understand the concept of staying calm. Hmm, the restroom window, huh? I wonder if you can really see the men's bathroom window from the one there. You can. I'm looking at it right now. I demand you show me this view at once! I suspect her height is what's limiting her ability to see. That's probably all I'm going to find out from his honor. Mr. Azureth, may I return to my other duties now? Yes, I'm sorry to have held you up. Thank you for your cooperation, your honor. Oh, any time, Mr. Edgeworth, any time. The judges in this country seem rather friendly. Yes, if not a little wishy-washy. However, I hear they are known to hand down very fair verdicts. Except of bad, I have something I wish to inquire about. Hey, how about doing some actual work, you? I wish to inquire into Detective Gumshoe's movements during the recess. You're getting in the way of the investigation. I have an order from Mr. Von Karma himself. Plus, I still hold investigative authority. Tch. So I hear you're the one who called for Detective Gumshoe to come down here. Fair day. That guy was just accused, you know. I just knew something was gonna happen. My detective's instinct told me. A lot of good it did you. You couldn't even protect one lone prosecutor with it. Ugh. Hold it! Francisca, I think you need to apologize. Ugh. I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry, Detective Bad. Please continue. Huh. I used the phone on the first floor and called the precinct. I told them to send somebody over. And that detective's the one that showed up. 
And only upon his arrival did you set Detective Gumshoe to stand guard, Detective Pat. Yeah, I waited for him on the first floor. After he got here, we came up to these defendant lobbies together. As we entered this hallway, we ran into you. Not you. You, you know, like you, you, not you, you, as in you, but you, as in you. You got me, you? She told us that Faraday was really mad. And that he dragged Rel off to lobby number two to have a word or something. And that Faraday had said to not let anyone interrupt them. So what choice did I have? All I could do was tell the big lug to stand guard outside. And around, what and around what time did all that take place? Let's see... I think it was about 30 minutes before I heard the gunshot. After giving the big lug his assignment, he never left the hallway, not once. Oh, and how can you make such a claim? Hmm. <laughs> One of the guards out in the floor's main lobby swore he didn't. If the detective never left the hallway, then where did he disappear off to? Huh, <laughs> that's simple. He must have gone into lobby number two, just as I suspected. You and I, we were in lobby number one next door. The only one without an alibi is Gumshoe. Hmm, it would seem I'm still missing some key pieces of information. Detective Bad, you also heard the gunshot, did you not? Yeah. I heard it when I was in defendant lobby number one. That's when I came running towards lobby number two together with you. How much time elapsed between you hearing the gunshot and your arrival on the scene? Less than a minute. What were your movements upon hearing the gunshot? I grabbed the big lug who was just walking around in the hall and raced into lobby number two. That's when we discovered the bodies. In that order. That makes you the discoverer of the crime scene, right? Yeah, I guess it does, little miss. I'm about to become a prosecutor very soon. You'll treat me with the dignity I deserve, or else. <laughs> you wave that thing around anymore. And I'll have you arrested for obstruction, little miss. He dodged it! You wouldn't dare. Huh. Just joking. Ugh. Detective Bad is really something if he can make Francisca behave. Are we about done? Is there anything else I should ask him about? Oops, I didn't mean to click that so fast. I'd like you to tell me the exact time you heard the gunshot. It was around the end of the recess and the trial was about to start again, I think. He was supposed to make time for himself to transfer the evidence he was holding. But I got the sense he wasn't going to show for the handoff. So I figured I should go get him, or he'd be late. And as I thought that, bang, the sound of a gunshot hit my eardrums. So he heard the gunshot right before the trial was about to restart, huh? Are we done here? I don't have any time to waste. Oh, come on. All you're doing is standing in front of this door doing nothing. I guess I must have picked the right thing with Edgeworth, then, with the right option. Huh. I get the sense that he's somewhat investigating this crime scene. Or rather, he's keeping us under surveillance. But to what end? Detective Bad, may I ask you to cooperate with us for just a little longer? I don't have anything else to say to the two of you. You guys were the ones who said you wanted to investigate in the first place. Fine then, be obstinate. We'll just do as we please. Come on, Miles. You may no longer be willing to help us, however. May I ask for the forensic scientist's cooperation? Do as you like. Yep, it's time to crank out the good old logic.
pink rubbery substance. I saw this in a different form earlier today. I believe this is a piece of a popped balloon. I suppose that's possible. The balloon probably got a little too close to our friend, the windowsill cactus. That would be the logical conclusion, yes. These bits of chocolate and cake, could they not have come from a Swiss roll? A Swiss roll? Why would a courthouse sell such a thing like that? It may not seem like the right venue, however it is being sold right over there. The vending machine? Ah, I see it. Stay neutral as a Swiss do until the end with these. Two for six dollars? Talk about expensive. Leaving the fact it's on the expensive side aside, the fact that cake crumbs and chocolate bits are found in this hallway suggests that they came from a Swiss roll that was purchased from this machine. Hmm, I think I have a pretty clear picture of what happened here now. Huh, naturally, after all, I'm here, aren't I? Detective Gumshoe must have sat on this bench as he ate a Swiss roll. And as he ate, he dropped it on the floor and sullied the bench. Ugh, how could he not clean up after himself? How utterly despicable! Hey Vanilla, welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping by. It's good to see you. Don't you dare whip me again. It wasn't I who made the mess in the first place. Anyway, if it was indeed Detective Gumshoe who brought the Swiss roll, that creates a rather interesting contradiction of facts. A contradiction? Where? Hmm, I think another look at the special courthouse vending machine is in order. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Wait, that might not be specific enough. I think I need to highlight this. Is this spot somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold? Eureka! Eureka! About Detective Gumshoe's finances, he said that until this morning, he didn't even have a single penny on his personage. Just how poor is that guy? If his bonus really was only five dollars, then he should not have been able to purchase a pack of Swiss rolls! However, facts being as they are, we found cake crumbs on the floor. Meaning Scruffy must have bought a pack somehow. Indeed. A detective should not have been able to purchase a pack, yet he did. The question is how? Hmm, I believe I now have a very firm grasp on what happened here. <laughs> well... I do too! Hmm. Alright, Franziska, would you care to share what conclusions you've come to? Why should I do that? We're still in the middle of a competition, you know. We should be checking to see if your conclusions are wrong first, so you go ahead. It's almost cute she's going this far to ensure that she wins. Almost. Very well, but first we need to pay his honor a visit to correct his testimony. September 10th, 5.15 p.m., District Court, courtroom number three. Okay, so like I said at the beginning of the stream, like so far all the cases we've been able to do on, uh, in just one stream, but this case is supposed to be a bit longer. So based on the... So we're actually exactly at the midpoint of this case, and we're about three hours into the stream. So I don't want to do a six-hour stream, so I'm actually going to call it here, and tomorrow we're going to continue this case and finish it so we have an even three hours, three hours. Uh, which is kind of sad because I'm actually really enjoying this case, but uh, I can feel my voice starting to give a little bit after doing four days of, of reading out loud on stream, but 
this is fun. And again, I really like seeing, um, you know, Miles and Francisca and Gumshoe all being young and interacting with each other and their relationship with Manfred and all that. Yeah, I know you guys, right? You're so excited. You want to find out what happens next, right? But don't worry. It'll be good. It'll be good. And it's not nearly as long as the next case. The next case is one of the longest ones in all of the Ace Attorney games. So, uh, yeah. And thank you for following me, Mr. Yo-Yo and Vanilla Caramel. Welcome, welcome. Hope you guys are doing well today. If you guys are new here, which I know a few of you are, you can also check out my other social media. My YouTube channel has my other VODs of this game, as well as all sorts of other games too. I play a lot of, like, murder mystery visual novel games, including The Great Ace Attorney. So if you want to see some of my previous playthroughs or previous games I've done, you can check that out. I also play RPGs, horror games, action games, fighting games, all sorts of different types of things. So, And I also have my Twitter where I announce my stream schedules and artwork and changes to the stream schedule. So hope you guys have a great rest of your evening or day, depending on where you're at. Uh, I really appreciate you guys being here. I'm really excited about this game, obviously, because, you know, I I've been gushing about it so much because, you know, I've played these games before and they're really good. So I'm very excited to share them with you and I'm glad I was able to do so. Let's see who we can raid, who's streaming right now. It looks like a few people are. Let's see who we want to say hello to. Let's say hello to Forte. He's playing Lobotomy Corporation. He's a great friend of mine. He is playing with Kip, and he plays a lot of games that I enjoy playing too, so if you like games that I play, you're probably going to enjoy games that he plays as well. So, I'll see you guys tomorrow, same time as today. We'll continue Turnabout Reminiscence. Thanks guys, and bye froggy friends!